another episode of Flagrant 2. Uh, I'm Andrew Schultz. I got Akash Singh in yep, the building. Yep, yep. We got Alex Media in the building. Yeah. Edin de Turki is uh, at home. He's on strict exile, strict shelter in home. Uh, not playing any games out there with that. And um, we're here at the studio. No heat on in the studio. My landlord thinks he's slick. <laughs> he literally, I, I listen. This is my suspicion. I don't know. Did I talk to you about this no, already? No. So we, I knew you'd have suspicions. Oh, uh, immediately. <laughs> I am not a very glass half full with other people <laughs> person. <laughs> like with my own life, isn't that interesting? Like with like, if you're like yeah. Yo, Schultz, do you think that you know you could play in the NBA? I'd be like, no, nah, that glass is looking pretty <laughs> full right about <laughs> now. I think I could figure it out. But with anyone else, I'm like, no, nah, they're trying to fuck me. Right. Or they're trying to screw me or something like that, right? <laughs> Yeah. I have a suspicion. Eh? She's also a big conspiracy theorist, but all conspiracies fuck him. Yeah, exactly. Everything <laughs> is against him. I'm the World Trade Center. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care can... who blew me up. I got blown up. Surprise you got me here then. Keep your friends close, <laughs> but your enemies close. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so we came in. It was the other day. We came in. The heat was, was off. Was it two days ago, Al? Yeah. So, you know, we've been coming in every yeah. day, obviously, to do this. So the heat was off, and it was when it was fucking freezing. Yeah. No, it was, uh, it was yesterday. I biked to work yesterday. I have this, like, motorcycle that I call, well, right. it was a motorized bike that I call a motorcycle. Yeah. And, um, and it was pouring rain. And I was like, the delivery guys can do it. I can fucking do it. It was 37 it's the degrees. the worst decision you've ever son, made in your life, son. yo. I'm on the bridge. I almost went, just went right off the bridge. Like, <laughs> I literally almost drove right off the bridge and just swan dove into the Only thing the water. that stopped you is that water is colder. Yeah, so the only thing that stopped me is my girl saying, you shouldn't bike in this weather. You're going to be freezing. <laughs> so, 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 so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm on a bike pissed off that she's right. My fucking Converse is soaked oh straight through. The socks are soaked. There's no fenders on the wheels, so the water's just coming oh up, hitting me in the face. That's it's hitting so all over the back. But I had to make it through despite her. Um, <laughs> and my whole saving grace when I get to the studios, this is going to be nice and toasty because we got the New York radiators, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, New York, you remember hot. New York? It's the too, too hot, hot radiator. Too yeah, hot, yeah, yeah. right? So I'm like, I'm going to lay all my clothes on the radiator. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Puerto Rican dryer. 100%. Right out? Mm, oh, I know. There we go. <laughs> so your, um, it's going to be good. Too. See? <laughs> you, yeah. it's, and it's the best because oh, you shit warm in five minutes. Why you got a whole dryer for yeah. right? So I'm I'm like, I get, I open the door. It's a little cold, oh gosh. Right? I'm like, that's weird. You'd yeah. think they would turn on the heat yeah. already because- I felt it when I walked in. You felt it. Because it's freezing on the first floor as soon as you walk in. Keep going. And I'm and you're on an elevator. You're like, ah, heat maybe- Heat rises, little, though, yeah, right? You're like, heat, heat rises. rises. Maybe so. it'll be warmer in the building. Maybe they just shut off like the main hallway that, heat. Hey. But each office got to have heat. Of course. And then I walked in. I said to Al at least three times because I'm a bitch. I was like- eh. Is it kind of cold? Is it? You're <laughs> yeah. trying to act like you're not a bitch. I'm like, yo, is it, is it a little bit chilly or what? What's going on? You're a bitch. I got a scarf on still <laughs> while we're recording this. Okay? So I, I go, it's a little bit fucking cold. My feet are soaked. Everything's soaked. I've taken off all my clothes outside the door. Right. Right. So I'm butt naked outside the door to our <laughs> studio. And I figure no one's coming to work today. So I I'm wasn't okay. I wasn't here yet. I was here. Nobody's here. It's just me. If I was here, we would have cuddled and kept warm. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. some real survival shit. I got you, boo. Al, <laughs> Al let me in that sweatsuit. <laughs> 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 so I go, uh, okay, I'm going to put my stuff on the radiator. Everything good. Radiator completely off. Butt naked. Mm. Okay. I go into the room where we have the merch. Yeah. I take a double XL. Anti-social justice warrior hoodie. Yeah. Put it on. Okay? <laughs> Looking we, like your girlfriend. Son, Mark said I look like Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> Mark comes in. I'm on the couch with only a sweatshirt on. Oh, nothing fuck. on my pants. I look like you, happy yeah. on a winter day when you're walking a baby dog. Yeah. You know? And... Uh, and Mark walks in, he goes, he, goes, he, goes, he goes, dude, why are you dressed like Ariana Grande? And I'm like, go back outside so I can put on my wet underwear. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yo, you need fashion undies. That's what I this said, tells you, dog. Oh, next season, we got to be straight because this, the heat is, and I understand what they did, I think. Hmm. I think they're like, nobody's coming into work because it's shelter in place. Let's save a few bucks. If that's the case, better we better save a few bucks on rent. Mm. Mm. I'm such a fucking good guy, Akash. That I'm like, I call him. He's got some sad ass voice on. 
He's all sad. How you doing? Oh, you know, it's a tough time. And I'm just like. Uh, Talk about your landlord? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't give a fuck. I know, bro. I'm trying to not give a fuck, but it's like he's going through it. You know, there's businesses in the building that are probably going to fall apart, you know? Yeah. Oh, God. I That's how this works, yeah. yo. This, I don't. Is, this is the reset. Huh? Yeah. It's the reset. It's the reset. <laughs> it's just Mother Earth going. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many careers you already ended putting all your shit on YouTube? You know how many, career, you know how many comedians went broke because of this guy? <laughs> what do you mean? Really? You've, you've shifted everything to online content. You know how many old comedians, dinosaur-ass comedians that were fucking going city to city and just toughing it out were like, well, <laughs> that's it. It's over. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, they I got, can still eke out a living, not before COVID, but they were just like, I can eke out a living, but I ain't going to make it big, man. They know sh- this YouTube shit is over. Yeah. Well, I mean, they can always do That's cruises. That's business, yo. Cruising. No, they can't. <laughs> 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 no, no. But uh, in, in all seriousness, I wasn't like actively doing that to them. I would right. be actively trying to take money out of the landlord's pockets if I was like, yo, do this. And then they made up some excuse. They were like, oh, you know, there's a lot of smoke that's coming from the thing, blah, blah, blah. I was like, but there was no smoke last month before the coronavirus. Mm. Also, Trump gonna give, Trump giving all the big businesses like a like a relief. How big we gotta get to that? The, I'm talking about this landlord. They'll right, give. when is this business big enough never, to get Never, never with a Republican uh, in office. No. G, never. No, 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 no. It's in effect right now. I was gonna speak to you after the show. You got you got a few grants coming your way, buddy. Really? Yeah. They have a small business loan well, or something like we that. Might, we might have to like tweak the numbers. Let's talk after. <laughs> yeah, I was doing a little research yesterday. Yeah. Really? You hey, got, you got an incorporation too. Hey, we, we got a couple grants coming. Hey, our way, talk brother. pretty to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, we can't talk about it out here. But yeah, All we right. got a couple well, grants. Well, shit, everybody, go look that up. Yeah. Yo, but you know what? We got to stop giving up giving out game a little bit because. On the podcast, we spoke about um, all the tax thing. No, not the tax thing. Oh. Well, a couple things, right? On on um, when we were doing the the daily, the nightly yeah, show, yeah. right? We spoke about uh, some little Corona hacks. We always yeah. drop the Corona hacks, and one of the Corona hacks was that there are restaurants in the city that have never delivered in their history. Yeah. But now, since you can't have people there, they have to find a way to make income, and food is a necessary item. Or an essential item is that yeah, the the yeah. term? So uh, they're allowing them to deliver. So I was like, "Yo, Manetta Tavern, you know that spot right next yeah. to uh, the cellar? It's yeah, like yeah. incredible." And Carbone, Carbone is this like amazing, amazing Italian spot. Oh you can't my get God. a reservation. Can't get a reservation. Yeah. Um, we said they're delivering. Take advantage of it today or yesterday. The Business Insider wrote an article showing a line of delivery boys, delivery men. Sorry, I can't say that. Outside of um, Carbon specifically. And they're like, people are flooding Carbone for deliveries. Now, I'm not saying this is us. It was probably going to happen organically. But we definitely oh, yeah. sped up something. the process. <laughs> and yeah. a, lot of, a lot of our fans are in New York. so oh, 100%. And yo, take advantage of that shit. Spicy rigatoni. Get that Caesar salad. And uh, you should be Gucci. All right, shit. Yeah. Hey, maybe you get to go also, right? I don't think that, yeah, I, I can't say no. I can't say. What if I just pretend I'm a delivery boy taking it, <laughs> taking it to Jersey? Son, I, I, I can't call them delivery boys no more after biking in the rain, bro. Son, I was I so, I couldn't it. understand why I you were like, do sorry, it. delivery man. I was yeah, like, I do you do have it, a, a case against you? You can't nah, talk nah, about I, boys? I couldn't do it because I was biking in the rain and I saw all these delivery men. I can't even say that word. That's how we're delivery people. And, yo, she also got an M word. So I do. Kinda, <laughs> <laughs> so I saw them biking this way. You know, they put the little plastic bags over their hands yeah. so their hands don't get cold. And I'm looking at these motherfuckers like, damn, I wish I had some plastic bags you right about now. <laughs> that fucking Son, fingernail's about to fall off. Plastic up. bag with the oven mitts. Exactly. Oven mitts, plastic bag over it. Don't worry about the break. Good money, bro. <laughs> Good money. You ain't breaking. Ain't nobody on the road. Dude, it is a nice ride. I will say this. It is a nice ride. Dude, I nobody's on the road. I took the yeah. tunnel in or uh-huh. out of the city, and Holland, I, Holland Tunnel, Lincoln Tunnel, Stand either right one. There, pick me up on the way. Yo, I got you. I picked you up go. before. You just gotta let me know. Let's go. Um, I think that I, they usually have me take the Lincoln, but I can switch it up. But I think <laughs> he just saw him pull out. He just finished saying, "Yo, I said, it's such a nice." I ride, said I nice take both. Oh, you passed me. <laughs> Come <laughs> get me. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's about halfway through you get bored of that shit. I'm not gonna lie, bro. All the, it's nice fresh air in the beginning. And after that, you're like, yo, what are we listening to, delivery man? Yo, we had a great ride over when I picked you up. You know what the best thing was, and I don't mean this in like a hateful way. Yeah. It's just a testament to how long we've been friends. We yeah. spoke about five words on a 30 minute drive to each other on the way here last week. But there was a reason for that. 
Was it? We were writing bits. Well, I was oh, writing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're writing roast stuff. For, the, yeah, yeah. for Alex. I didn't yeah, yeah. have that. But still, it's also just like, it's just but nice. we could easily do that. Yeah. 100%. That's, dude, that's male, that's male friendship. Yeah. And I and I prefaced it. I think I prefaced it when I walked in. I was like, yo, I'll just let you know I got to write something. I was, I was, you I didn't loved give a fuck. It. I loved it. I was, I mean, I, I got to listen to his old white man radio. I, son. I got to tell those old white man radio. Son. The ticket son. is old son. white dude. Son. You be turned around up AM station. Son, this shit is so funny, bro. What's wrong with an AM station? The feed's not as clear, but it's warmer. You have to click every time. <laughs> it ain't even digital yet. Bro, oh, son. dude, I could not believe what he was watching. Middle-aged white dudes, the ticket. You every love time I talk about shit. it, I love that station. That's uh, my, those are my guys. They got a younger uh, guy I'm actually cool with now, but they're just great. Just middle-aged white guys from a South. They were good. The I'm not going to lie. I was like listening a little bit and it like it fueled the racism for my jokes against Alex. Like anytime, <laughs> that, anytime that I didn't have something to go for for Alex, I just I heard one of them. Well, the problem with these defensive backs, <laughs> I think he called them defensive blacks at one point in time and then corrected them. So. They just want too much damn money. <laughs> Dancing in the end zone after interceptions. <laughs> we get it. You got rhythm. <laughs> Guys, uh, I, 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 there's something that I really want us to all talk about, but I think we're going to have to stop for one second before I shit through my pants. We've never recorded this early. What? I'm, I have to shit on like an insane level right now. And I've been holding it in glass. Okay, I'll tell you a really quick story, and then I'm going to go shit. Okay. Um. Drag this on as long as you can, Aldis. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we need a lot of follow-up questions. Okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> so last last night, right, I'm going to bed, and my shorty damn near tore each other's heads off multiple times. Yo, uh, yo, it's been an interesting thing to watch. Yo, so, yo, because so, <laughs> my girl and I don't like quibble much, but when we fight, it's a banger. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a weird thing where we're both trying to avoid the fucking blow up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're just kind of softly stepping around each other. Yeah, a lot and, of ice. But, but then seeing you and your girl like. Quibble? It oh, was we just were, funny to watch. A lot watch. of quibbling. A lot of quibbling. We had a family dinner Sunday, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it felt like a family. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so, uh, what's it called? So we're, we're in bed last night and, uh, we started watching The Outsider on HBO, which is dope. Check that out. If that you guys show, need. I told you. Yeah, yeah. I was telling you about it. It's a, I really feel like I want to share things to distract people with. Like, I, think, yeah. I feel like it's an important thing that we could do. I think if there's no sports to distract us, we should have a show we talk about 100%, every day. 100%. Yeah. And, uh, so the outsider go check it on hbo really good and uh so far and um we're in bed we're like cuddled up and everything like that and um my girl knows when i fart because my whole body tenses up it gets rigor mortis and then i <laughs> fart right so she just she has that lockdown right so she like yeah. i'll start to tense up and she'll just go huh, okay and then i just let her rip so that's fine <laughs> that's easy right next Mark next here. is this yeah mark's here so what happened was this i'm in bed right and i start scratching my butthole Right? <laughs> right? Oh, I'm scratching my butthole. Uh, now, I do this thing. Now, a lot of people at home don't know this, but I do do this. Akash actually knows this. Right? It's, it's, <laughs> so I scratch my butthole, right? After I scratch my butthole, I smell it, right? Now, here's something interesting. I try to sneak in the smell with a breath, <laughs> right? But here's the thing. You can't sniff and breathe at the same time. Sniff is... Yeah. But how breathing you, wait, is just... De physically demonstrate how you... So I scratch like that, yeah. and then I go, and I- How do you think that's sneaking it in that nobody okay, notices? My girl is turned this way, okay? I'm big spoon, she's little spoon. So I'm like, this girl's little spoon. So I went like this, right? I scratch, scratch, scratch. She doesn't say anything. And then like I go, doing a bump. And then I went like this. I went, I went, I went, right? <laughs> I just go, and then she goes, did you just smell <laughs> your asshole? <laughs> and I don't know what to say. I literally don't know what to say. So this is my response. This is my response, ready? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. All my years of comedic wit. Oh, wow. 12 or 10 or however long I've been doing. A little bit. Holy That's shit. what I went with. 13 years. <laughs> a little bit. As if she'd be like, oh, just a little bit? All right, let's go to sleep. <laughs> Wrap that shit finger hand around me. And let's get this oh, spoon in all. Talk. Oh fuck! You ever been caught by your girl in a way that you just can't get out? You just like I don't know how to own <laughs> this weird ass thing I just a did. A little bit. I can't remember any, but man, I, I know that feeling. I want to hear other people that send in like you were doing some weird shit and your girl yeah. caught you, and you just had to sit there and own it. Yo, what is the weirdest shit your girl I caught can't you remember, doing? Remember, but I know own. it happened. Yeah. Were you cheating? A, a little, little bit. bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> all right, all right, let me go poop before I, I shit myself. And then I we wanted get back to keep into asking it. you questions just to keep you here. Go ahead, buddy. All right, people, we're going to take a break for a little quick second. I'm talking to you at home right now. I'm talking to you at home right now. I'm talking to you at home right now. Um, baldness is a choice. Balding is a choice right now. Uh, if you notice your hair is thinning, you are making a choice to go bald. You do not have to go bald. You can keep your hair. Um, I thought that my hair was thinning, I think, over 10 years ago. And I started getting on a drug that got me to keep my hair. And the company Keeps will get you on that exact same drug pill. You get to keep your hair. I'm telling you, there is one thing that dictates how well men age, and that is a full head of hair. If you got a full head of hair, people are like, oh, my God, he looked great for his age. If you got no hair, be like, damn, motherfucker, getting old. Keep your fucking hair. It is a choice now. Go out there. Keep it. And the best way to do it is prevent it from leaving. So if you notice it's thinning, if you notice it's going away, you get on it now. Okay? Keeps.com slash flagrant. You can go there and go through all the steps, and they'll make sure that they get you that. You will keep your fucking hair. I cannot stress this to you enough. I get DMs all the time asking for the brand, ask for the company, ask for the promo code. Keeps.com slash flagrant. That is it. Simple as that. Keep your fucking hair, okay? As a guy, you got to do this. If you're a girl, all right, you got a boyfriend who might be bald, and we like to ignore. We like to ignore it. We like to act like it's not even happening. It is happening. Let them know. Keeps, okay? Keeps.com slash flagrant. Do it. Make sure you treat your scalp right and keep that hair for the rest of your life. It is inexcusable. Inexcusable. Honestly, the only genetic gift I got, I think, from God is he gave me a full head of hair. And I'm a little annoyed that Keeps has made it this easy for motherfuckers to go bald. You have to no not. advantage. Have so no now advantage. I'm done. My only advantage is washed. It's nothing. Perfect. Anyway, go to Keeps.com slash flagrant. Get that shit. Keep your hair. Okay? We're quarantined now. Might as well have a great head of hair. Fully stocked by the time we're back. Ooh. Ooh. Glow up. During this quarantine. Let's get back to the show. Um, okay, I'm back. Cleaned up. You know what I mean? <laughs> I cleaned up. You know what I'm saying? How was it? I washed. I washed check. 100%. Uh, you could even touch them. Um, it was good. The new Andrew, yo. <laughs> so, no, I know. This really changed my life. How, how do you wash hands? You know, sometimes I wonder about your technique. Huh? I wonder about your hand washing technique. I wash it the way everybody washes it. You get, you, you like, you do the whole, you get the fingers and all that, get the thumbs. No, I just, <laughs> I, I use, I wash the part that I use. Which is so, what? Well, so I wipe usually with these two fingers. I knew that. So I just go like that. And I just, <laughs> I put some soap on those fingers and I go like that and then I'm good. But I don't have to wipe these. You fingering your own asshole? No, like, I'm like more like Spider-Man. You, you know what I mean? Wash with just two fingers? I think I wipe like that. How do you guys wipe? Maybe these three? I How do you have, wipe? I use all four. Like, get a good amount of surface. Yeah, I think area so. On the paper, so yeah, you got a big old black ass to wipe. I'm out here with this. I'm out <laughs> of this little Caucasian booty. Oh, yeah, I can I get it with two fingers. You, you know what I mean? You have strong ass hands. I'm surprised you don't cleft your asshole, dude. Oh, I gotta watch out. <laughs> Too, dog. That's why I switched the other day. <laughs> <laughs> you were just hooking yourself yeah, with it. You hooked your bidet up yet, yo? Say what? You hooked your bidet up yet? Man, can I just live my quarantine <laughs> without judgment? Without <laughs> insecurity? <laughs> I missed you, Al, gosh. Yo, missed you too, dog. Um, no, but in all seriousness, we moved to my, my girl's crib. Yeah. So now there's no bidet. The bidet is over at my crib. You install it at your crib, or it's just at your crib uninstalled. This is information. Slick warning, yo. I'm slick warning. It's a politician's warning. Hey, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> the heater works in the building, but there's some smoke, so we're trying to figure it out. <laughs> yo, some real shit before we uh, get into the um, to the to the regular flagrancy. You know, um, we've been talking so much about Corona and like the things that are happening, and kind of like trying to prepare people for little stuff. Uh, that's going down. And um, I think the next big wave, this is my prediction, mm -hmm. the next big wave mm -hmm. um, will be, and I think it starts this week, are uh, people getting laid off work. Mm. I think that 
companies are going to start to call. I'm going to be honest. You started that sentence like you had a fucking tip for all of us. Know, like, right? yo, the next big technology that you guys need to invest in. No, or no, no. Yo, well, let's ride this wave, yo. No. Well, and then that I mean, should turn into a tidal wave, a fucking tsunami <laughs> killing all of us. Well, I mean, if you want to take advantage of something like that, if you're a guy who puts some money in the market like yeah. you do, Akash. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the market is extremely affected by employment rates. Yeah. And what everybody's waiting for, apparently is for the employment rate to come out. Now, if you notice Trump, Trump's been trying to say, well, once you did your two weeks, you you go back to work. Yeah. He wants everybody back to work because he knows once the employment rate comes out, <laughs> the market's going to fucking dive. And that's when it really starts happening because what is the market, right? The market is, in a lot of ways, judging people's ability to consume, right? Yeah. I can consume a stock. I am I'm literally betting that that stock is going to go up because people are going to consume it, Yeah. right? If people are unemployed, what can they not do? Spend. Can't spend nothing. If they're not working for a company, that company cannot produce. Yeah. Production consumption. That's what runs the economy. Yeah. So with unemployment high, I mean, a lot of people yeah. are unemployed, you're going to see, and I think this is the week they lay people off. It's The big dip seems to come when there's panic. And that's why every time they do a stimulus, I know it's not going to work. I don't know the economics of it necessarily, but I'm skeptical that it will work. I can explain. Because I'm like, you're not going to get rid of people's panic. So here's the thing. In order for the economy to function, you can't just give people money. That's not what makes it function. Didn't it work in 08, though? Because what happened no, in 08? We built businesses, not people. What happened in 08? We built our businesses. Right? right? And those businesses pay employees. Yeah. Those employees... Go buy pizza. But most of his stimulus plans are for businesses. So sure, far. sure. There's two ways to go about it, right? You either bail out the business or you bail out the employees. You trickle down or you trickle up. I exactly. Guess. Yeah. Right? But either way, the goal is not to throw some money in your pocket. The goal is actually to hand you money that you then spend. spend. Yeah. It's like when you get paid at a casino. You know when a casino get or like a casino gives you chips because you're a high roller. Yeah. They know what you're doing with them chips. Right, right, right. Like whenever you work as a comic at a casino. Yeah. They can't wait to pay you because yeah. they know yeah. the second you're off fucking, fucking stage. Losers. Do you think you think Rich Voss when he gets off stage is going <laughs> back to the hotel room? No, I want some action. I need a new pair of Jordans. <laughs> exactly. Where are these Jordans? <laughs> <laughs> right? Love the seven just came out on re-release. I think it's a good price on StockX. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we got to get Voss on the podcast. That's probably my favorite He's the podcast. best, dude. He's the he best. literally is. So, how much fun do we have at the Patrice? He's the best, that, dude. dude. He's the best. So, so, um, so that's their, their thing. They're like, yo, let's give some money. Let's throw some money at this problem. Yeah. That worked in 08. Right. It can't work now because even if you give me money. I'm not spending it. Because I'm sheltered. Interesting. So Interesting. even if you bail out the businesses. What are they going to do? They can't hire anybody. They can't, they can't even open. hire nobody. Point. Uh. It's like all these businesses, and I'm sure, you know, like, uh, I'm sure your girl has to go through it. We All, all of our girls have to do their work in the corporate world. Right. got to go through it. It's like, literally, they're just calling clients and going, so what do you want to do? And they're going, well, we don't know what to do. Okay, <laughs> yeah. we'll call you next week. Yeah. My girl's lucky in that it's healthcare advertising. So it's like marketing for whatever, but healthcare, they're Everybody wants medicine, right? Yes. Give me everything. So 100%. She, knock on wood. She good. But yeah, I've always just thought what's going to make people panic. And if the unemployment number is high, people are going to panic. And if you have stimulus, but we still feel like we can't go outside, people are still going to sell. Because once you think we're fucked, you're selling and let me make what I can. Yes. And then if you lose a few dollars, you're like, all right, I'll sell it. for. And that's what drives the price down and down and down. Yeah. So I think, like you said, JFK, if, if they shut down JFK and then the news circulates and everybody's melting down, let's just sell yeah. and get what we can. That's the big sell-off. Yeah. Unemployment number's high. Fuck it. Sell. Let's get what we can. I heard a different, uh, another theory also, and I think you touched on this, which is like, uh, instead of trying to predict the bottom. Just put slowly. Slowly. Yeah. Just do a trail. Yeah. And you know that it's going down. You're yeah. putting, let's say you have 10,000 total and you're putting in 1,000 every week. Yeah. You know that it's going to go down on that first 1,000 and you're going to lose some money, but eventually it's going to yes. come up. But that last 1,000 that you hit before yeah, it comes yeah. up. You might make 
I mean, who knows what the stock is, but yeah. that's what you're going to make all your money, yeah, you, right? You, you can't chase the perfection of putting all your money this is in the right lowest at the bottom. moment. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you never, that's just not yeah, worth yeah. the risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. just keep putting in slowly. Slowly, yeah. And I'm talking shit like I've done it. I haven't done I, it. I'll, I've put in, uh, invested in my Roth IRA, and then I'm going to like move that money around, and then I'm going to put more money in, more money in. But like, it's, I'm not putting in, I'm not dumping in money. You yeah. should have a. I saw one guy said, have a one year emergency fund, meaning like we scale back everything, not fucking. The, the cell phone whatever like yeah. this is to survive one year survival fund yeah and then if you have money left you can invest yeah yeah i always try to I've always that's always been my strategy is like yeah. how do we how do i operate for a year paying everybody paying myself right and now you know i got a girlfriend that's more responsibility yeah because at the end of the day it's like it, we, we could act like that's the thing and like times like this you, you realize like the value of gender roles oh yeah because it's like we could act like, oh, we're equals and we both have a responsibility to provide. It's like, I have a responsibility to provide. Yeah. And then you have a responsibility to provide until you don't. Yeah. And then I do. Right. That's just how, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right? It's yeah. not like I can stop providing. That's modern day gender roles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we both get jobs, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I better not lose mine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You can lose yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah. If you lose yours, I just got to work harder. You know what? You know what? You know what it is? You know how like a car can drive with three wheels? Yeah. We're three wheels. <laughs> and your girl's the fourth wheel, right? And it's like, it's nicer. Yo. But we going to get there. Yo. You know? We are a tricycle. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're a tricycle. tricycle. Yeah. You add another wheel. That's great. We good now. We, we good. You know what I mean? Exactly. Your girl's like the bumpers in the bowling alley. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> like people bowl before bumpers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then I'll work harder if I get my, if you lose your job, I'll work harder. And then I come exactly. home and you don't have a job, so cook something. Yeah. It's like. Because I'm like, tired from all this work. It's like if, if your girl loses her job, it's like, all right, we're going to figure this out. And if I lose my job, it's like, all right, I'm going to figure, gotta this, figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I'm going to figure this out, man. It's a lot of it's a lot of I when it's on us. It's oh, a lot yeah. of we when it's well, on us. <laughs> we got to do that shit today. We back. Like, all right, what we cooking for dinner tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, did we do laundry yet? Oh, we got to clean up, huh? <laughs> yeah, this house is a little dirty. We should clean this shit <laughs> while I'm at work. Hey, while I'm at work, why don't we clean this apartment? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, we 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 uh, hope everybody's good at home, man. We hope that uh, that you guys work everything out, and hopefully your business take care of you. And uh, you know, if not, I'm sure there's like packages when you get laid off, right? You get some unemployment. They're gonna have to do something. Yeah. I mean, this is gonna be this is weird. This is weird. I think the next yeah, yeah the next couple of weeks are gonna be like really telling as far as where the economy goes. You can't stop it for a week straight. Think about it. It's we've only really been quarantined for a week, right? Yeah, a full quarantine, and really just New York. A lot of the country is like kind of in it, kind of not, whatever. Yeah. New York and San Fran are the most locked down. Yeah, Dallas just did. Um, what does it stay at home or whatever they yeah, call yeah, it? Shelter, shelter at, at home. home. Yeah, yeah. But that's I think in effect today. But it's gonna. It's we don't know. And Al and I were just debating off the podcast. He said somebody said the only way to make this actually go away is everybody is fully locked in their house for two weeks. And I just don't think that's possible to no, do. No, it's not possible because yeah, they keep possible. giving us outs. But, I mean, that's the only way we can get rid of it, like, right now. Yeah. We stayed yeah. in for two weeks. Yeah. All the services, it would die. What's your joke? I see your joke face right now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yo, that was so fucking so, demeaning, I son. Know, because I was disgusted son, with you. Yo. I, I'm I around this motherfucker so yo. much. I see what it's. I did have a joke, though. I did have a joke. He <laughs> was right. That's why I wasn't even angry at him. Because <laughs> so uh, what's your little fucking joke? Yeah, yeah. Where's your little wisecrack? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like his girl sensing his body tense up and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh. But it is true. I did have a joke, Al. <laughs> uh, my joke was like, you know how they've been keep on allowing us to exercise? Yeah. Like, everybody's like, you got to stay inside, but you can exercise. Like, do, you think they're worried that, like, Americans are already so fat that if they keep us inside, <laughs> keep us inside, we'll just start dying, dude. We'll just start game over. Just obesity guaranteed. Imagine, oh my God. like, we're moving around on an everyday basis. Oh, yeah. If you're just at home. Yeah, that's nuts, dude. It I might mean, be a wrap. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're teetering already. 
I mean, there's already people so unhealthy. Think, yeah, think how many people walk side to side. The Zion? <laughs> <laughs> Son, have you seen that meme with the penguin penguin walking? And they're no. like, Zion, go, Zion walking back for a time now. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I've never seen that. Anyway, um, so weirdly enough, some very interesting things have happened this week um, in the uh, in the athletic world mm-hmm. that uh, Akash is going to help break down. But remember last week we were all like, "How? What the fuck is going on with Tom Brady? Why is he going to the Buccaneers?" Yeah, you know we had our theories, etc. Well, this week a uh, report was dropped, and it basically explained the saga leading up to now. So it explains. It's an ESPN article. It's yeah. a pretty long read. Yeah. The long and short of it is everybody that kind of sensed this for the past five years and has been whispering, I don't think Tom Brady's happy. I don't think he's happy. They were right. He kind of started to go away from the Belichick method and lean into his own TB12 thing. What is that? You know, the TB12 method about pliability and he had his trainer. And there was this article that came out like two years ago where he would have his trainer in the facility a bunch. Guerreros or something Alexis Guerreros, I think was his name. And people isn't that our friend? Oh, yeah, maybe it was Alex Guerrero. So Alex <laughs> Guerrero was our friend. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Shout out to Alexis. Uh, yeah. Cooligans, what's up? But he uh, he had a trainer that he would bring in that was his TB12 guy, and then it kind of started to cause a division in the locker room. Belichick, Belichick sent him, him home. There was yeah. some tension there. Brady essentially, long and short, didn't feel appreciated. Mm. He felt like, I don't like that Belichick is just kind of like... Undermining He me. treats me like every other player, essentially. Oh, he wanted to be treated nice. Yeah, he's not even trying to undermine you like, hey, if you're good, just let you know you're not as good as you think. It's The second you're not of use to me, we will get rid of you. His dad had a quote that was something like, the second they find a quarterback as good as Brady for a dollar cheaper, they're done with Brady. Mm. And that, that's kind Brady's of Brady's dad. Yeah, it. Brady's dad okay. said something like that. And Brady kind of felt the same way. And, like, he felt like when it was deflate gate, everybody just had him take the fucking fall. Uh, Belichick wasn't really with him, standing by him in the news conference, whatever. Like, all these little things added up where Brady's like, yo, these guys don't appreciate me. And he was just unhappier and unhappier over time. He wanted a longer-term deal, like now, in his last couple of contracts, extensions and all that. And Belichick was just like, My no. understanding was that, just from reading a little excerpts of it, was that... Uh, he didn't ask for the long-term deal, that he was specifically going for the one-year deals to have like leverage in the offseason. Uh, my understanding, and I would have to reread it now because maybe I misunderstood, uh, but my understanding was he wanted to retire a Patriot, but they wouldn't really commit to him until he was 45, which is how long he wants to play. Right. And that was just like, yo, you don't think I'm going to do it. You don't appreciate what I've done. I'm, I'm down to retire a Patriot. But then it just got as the, they would have like – two-year deals with little opt-outs or whatever, but it was always the idea that we're not fully committing to you. We're ready to move on when we need to, mm. essentially. And Brady, at a certain point, got, he just he's so fucking like upset at Belichick. Well, there's one big moment. Go ahead. I, I, my, the my, big my. moment is um, it happened prior to the Garoppolo trade. So you know when uh, Jimmy Garoppolo got traded to the 49ers, right? right? You remember in this, Alex? Yeah. Everybody at home, I'm sure you guys remember Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of tension uh, between Belichick and Brady. Right. And, uh, you know, Belichick was – and well, Brady was basically like, yo, what's the deal? What's going on here? I think Brady was coming off of injury. No, uh, yeah. he was coming off of deflate gate. Garoppolo played that year. Injury was like 2008, 2007, something like that. Matt Castle started that year. They went 11 Okay, so maybe it was the play game, but there were three quarterbacks that they had. They were all solid quarterbacks. It was Jacoby yeah, They're Bissett, all starters now. Yeah. All, there was uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. And the whole league, they traded, I think, uh, Jacoby, or they let Jacoby go to the Colts, yeah. right? And then um, Jimmy Garoppolo was like, everybody in the league is like, yo, this is a starting quarterback. This is before, obviously, the 49ers, where we show that he might be limited. Everybody was really excited yeah. about him. He's the number one. And um, I guess he was playing some games. He was fucking balling his ass off. Balling. Um, and Belichick really liked him. And mm-hmm. Belichick preferred him to Brady. And Brady was not fucking having it. Brady was upset. And Brady kind of put his foot down and was like, hey, listen, you're not going to have this other quarterback here. I'm the quarterback of the team. And Belichick calls up the 49ers to make a trade and offers Brady to the 49ers. Uh, did you not read this part? No, I did not Son, see this part. That's the big thing. So he calls up the 49ers and offers Brady. The 49ers are like, what? Yeah. Are you serious? Kraft gets wind of it 
shuts it down. Right. Oh. I had heard there After was... After that, dead. But oh. that was the... Fr- so when he was like, make a decision and the decision is me. Right. Belichick was like, no, it's not. Yeah. And then offers Brady the fucking 49ers and Kraft has to stop it. And the 49ers jam or whoever the fuck was on the other line was like, wait, did I hear this right? They got at least one, if not two Super Bowls after that. Two. They went to it. Yeah. They went to two. They, so they got at least, they won at least one. Yeah. They gone to two. They yeah. might've had the fifth. He might've got his fifth ring after deflate get. I'm not completely positive, mm-hmm. but so Belichick would have been wrong there. My p- kind of view on it with Brady is like, what do you think got you the dynasty? Bill doing this. Why would you think it's going to stop for you? Ooh. It's going to end ugly because you have an ego and he has an ego. And I see emotionally how you're hurt. But in the back of your mind, you got to know. Oh, this is great. You know, when you fuck up and you're upset. Oh, I, I, I was great. here Friday. We were talking out some shit. My car got towed and yeah. I'm upset. Why the fuck is New York City towing? You're giving reprieve for all these people. Blah, blah, blah. Why are you still towing me? I know in the back of my mind, this is my fault. Yeah. This is what it is. Mm. I know the deal. The truth Tom Brady got to know in the back of his mind is this is what got you the dynasty. Bill Belichick doesn't love anyone. He's not going to love you when the time comes. And that is a tough pill to swallow, but it got you a fucking dynasty. The greatest dynasty ever. Uh. And it might not have been that without you. Cool. Accept that. But just you, that's Peyton Manning. Just a great quarterback, that's Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning having all these offensive weapons, throwing these touchdowns. Yeah. Two Super Bowls, and one of them he got fucking carried to when he was washed. That's the Broncos. That's one. the Broncos. Oh, my God, man. That's an amazing point. You can't be upset about the Patriot way if you benefited from the Patriot way. Yeah, this is the Patriot way. It's and not that's the what, Tom Brady way. It's not what, TB12. That's what Belichick is probably thinking. He's like, wait, why, why are you getting your fucking panties in a bunch about this? We had a sit down every year where I said I was going to – I was going to release these players and I was going to get rid of these players and trade these players. And you were totally okay with it and on board with and it. And even if they didn't have a sit down, you knew and you saw and you're smart and you won. And I love Tom Brady and I hope he wins a ring with uh, Tampa, Bay. Tampa Bay. But like, this is what it is, man. You got to know this is what it was going to be. It had to end like this. And I think with time, they'll be okay because you'll realize that. Right now, it's super fucking. He's in his uh, feelings. But in the back really, of his mind, he got to know. Dude, you know what? That really makes me... Um, it really makes Belichick more likable. It's like everybody asks for equality, right? Everybody asks to be treated equal. <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. begs for that, right? And then... It's when, right up his alley, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Likable to you. No, <laughs> I'm looking at Belichick it's like, true because... Oh, you're an asshole. You know what <laughs> it is? Like, we all ask for that, right? We all ask for certain treatment, but we don't know what that treatment entails, right? right. Like, we tease women all the time on the podcast. Like, y'all ask for equality, but... And, when it benefits you and then right. when it doesn't you're like no nah, i'm good yeah. right we we're just talking about it right now yeah and that's the situation with tom brady right yeah. it's like you ask for well you, maybe he never asked for equality maybe he wants to be treated better but everybody in the world asks for this concept of equality and then when we have an actually equal system truly equal hey i don't care who the yeah. fuck you are tom brady or whatever it takes to win Whatever yeah. whatever your fucking name is, whatever it takes to win, that means we cut Tom Brady a yeah. year before he's done, and we cut the guy that you don't even know a year before he's done. This is just the Patriot way, and everybody falls in line. I can sleep at night as Belichick with that. Yeah. And if you spell that out to your players, and I don't even know if you owe them that, but if, if it's known in the ethos, it's known in the culture, they shouldn't be that upset about it. They're Yeah. It's your job to... Play like you have two more years left. Because if you play like you got one, you're gone. Yeah. So keep that. And you know what? That might have been the thing that allowed Tom Brady to play at an elite level until he's 42 years old because he's always been playing like he got oh, two shit. more left. Oh, that's interesting. And, hey, maybe they'd have been they, maybe they'd have won for 10 years longer if they traded Garoppolo, whatever, because, like, he had in his mind his quarterback of the future who's young. So I could get... I could get the world for Tom Brady right now and then build around this guy who's in his early 20s oh, yeah. and just move forward, and now we got 15 more years. Dude, that's a great take, Why would man. I not do this? And I love Brady, dude. I'm a Brady fan. Yes. But, like, that's the, that is the Patriot way. That is what we all fucking put them on a pedestal for. That's what you benefited I'm from. I'm really surprised, though, because if the Patriot way is like that, uh, as a player, how— 
how do you give your all? I know you give your all to stay on, but then it's like, why would you want to be on a team that you know, like, hey, if I start to slip, I'm out of here. It's like you kind of want a little bit of that security, like, yo, you know, if something happens to me, my team got me or, you know, my squad got me. So Belichick doesn't, they don't win a ton in like the free agency game. They don't often go out there and throw money at the, the best free agent and get a bunch of players. They'll draft guys who Julian Edelman was, nobody gave a fuck about Julian Edelman. It was actually, oh. it was a Dallas news, Dallas Morning News writer who was like a sports guy who was cool with Belichick. Right. And he's like got a hard on for special teams. And he was like, hey, Bill, and Bill loves special teams. He's like, Bill, this guy's a good special teams player. Yeah. That's how Bill got, he gets cast offs. So special teams for everybody, anybody who's uh, foreign and doesn't watch American football, that's uh, punt return, kickoff return, and yeah. uh, kicking off, et cetera. Yeah. It is, I don't understand how there's like, People that love special tip, why that affects the game so much, why it's so important. I, I don't really understand. Belichick is obsessed with it, so it's got to mean something in my mind. But in my mind, I'm like, eh. what is it? Is it just field position? It's is it field like- position, and then the field goal. You know, if you get two extra points a game, that can win you one. That'll swing one or two games a season. What do which, you mean about the? Uh- so the Cowboys lost. The Cowboys had a terrible kicker all year. His name was Bill Maher. He missed like 50 percent of his field goals, which yeah. is a terrible percentage. You should yeah. be somewhere on 70, 80. Right. Uh, that's like three points a game. Right. They lost like four or five games by three points. So if theoretically, now you're not going to make 100%, but if you win 100% ah. and you get an extra three points a game or yeah. whatever it is, now you're 12 and four instead of eight and eight. And now you're one of the yeah. best records in the league instead of not it's in like the playoffs. It's like the free throw shooting. It's free throw uh, shooting. It's it like, is. That's exactly what it is. If team shoots, what is the statistic? You know, 75% or something like that. Yeah. There's no close games that you don't win. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like that. Interesting. Okay, okay. And yeah, field position saying. matters. And, you know, getting a ball. The at your... field position thing is interesting. Like, if you could really maximize field position in football, especially if you're a team that has a great defense. And this is another thing about what makes Bill Belichick so smart. I don't yeah. think he's still doing it, but he's just always experimenting. The NFL, the kickoffs, people get hurt very badly on kickoffs. I don't know why. It's something yeah. about kickoffs over punts. People, like, career-ending injuries happen. Paralysis happens the most when people get paralyzed on the field during kickoffs so the nfl is kind of trying to phase them out yeah we know so they that, move yeah. the kickoff from the 30 yard line to the 35 so, so it would be more touchbacks so just yeah. kick it in the end zone take it at the 25 yard line yeah belichick instead of kicking it in the end zone told his kickers kick it as high as you can So we have more time so we have more time to get down there and if a touchback is going to give you to the, the 25 if you kneel in the end zone we got you, you take, on the 15 let's see if we can tag them with the 20 18 19 21 22 let's just get that extra five yards like that's the guy's a fucking maniac yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. to expect any emotion out of this guy, I just don't see how you can do that. Yes. And he doesn't like. Yeah, he's not. Randy Randy Moss went there when Randy Moss got traded to Oakland, and then kind of wasn't doing anything and mm. was just struggling. Yeah. So now we make a trade for Randy Moss. Yeah, but uh, you answer my question. It's like they tend to get players who just are happy to play. Yeah, it's not just a lot of happy guys to be on a team. Are not a lot of young 20 something guys who are in line for their first huge paycheck or yeah. even are ever going to the Patriots. And then Belichick it's rare. Can just spot their yeah, he gifts. Can. He's like, "Oh yeah, I can make it." And I, yeah, he, yeah, he's a football Belichick genius, is like dude. the Tiger King. Oh, he let's see it. He fi- <laughs> he finds <laughs> he finds players that are extremely needy. Right, they're down and out. <laughs> yeah, they have yeah. no other opportunity. All right, I'm you now. Yeah, right, okay. he takes them in. Yeah, and they'll do anything he wants because Julian Edelman wasn't getting all these other opportunities from other teams. Yeah, right. It was nothing. It was like you don't get to play football at all. You want to play in the NFL? Come. You want to come over here? Yeah. And then you could treat them however they want because they have it already have it in their head. Hey, I'm disposable. So when you dispose of them, they're like, that's what's supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about this one to the Tiger King when Mark yeah. shows his ass up. But yeah. the thing about Mark may, do, may be here already. I just want oh, to point that out. Okay. But we might be holding him off for, you know, specific. When second. you this will be again, we'll talk yeah. about it. But, uh, might not like, even be Mark that we have it coming in. Might oh, be someone else. Oh, shit. Yeah. You know I mean? Never know. Might when, be a star of a new Netflix show. You know, I mean, you never or a current Netflix documentary. You never know about these things on the, oh, on the you know. What's happening? Flagrant two podcasts. No you know what I'm saying? You know, on, I gotta, like gotta, 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 gotta be. You know, Alex has sent you a little text message. Just wanted to check one thing. Make sure you do that. But anyway, go on. Uh, when you take someone who's broken, like the Tiger King took yeah. these broken people, yes. and then you give them something, yes. who are they loyal to? To you. you. Julian Edelman, I don't know if you remember that video from Sports Center. him and Brady are at a hockey game, and then he's putting Brady on blast. Like, he's going to stay. He's yeah, staying. Yeah, yeah. Julian Edelman had had shirts saying, stay, Tom, whatever. Yeah, yeah. He wants Tom to stay with the Patriots because 
He's not leaving. Why is he not leaving? Because he had nothing, and then Belichick gave him something. He was nobody. Nobody gave a fuck about me. Belichick gave me a career. I'm a Super Bowl MVP maybe two times. Yeah. I will die for Bill Belichick. I'm not going no fucking where. He took a guy who didn't have a contract and made him a Super Bowl MVP. MVP. And there's, listen, there's good undrafted free agents, but his story in particular is like, Nobody even thought about it. You think Edelman guy. would kill for Belichick? He might, dude. He might. He might. He might go to Florida for three grand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's take a break for a second, pay some bills. Guys, you need hard dicks, okay? Especially during this quarantine time. This is not a game out here. Okay, you are living with your girl, your wife, whoever it is. You guys are with each other all the time, okay? It's easy to want to fuck when you're not seeing her five days a week for 50 hours a day, barely hanging out, coming home tired, exhausted. You guys don't do it for a few days. You're pent up. But when you are seeing each other every single day, all day, you might not have that same desire, bro. It might get a little too comfy. So you might need to spice it up because that lady, in order for her to be calm, she needs the dick. She's not going to be calm without the dick. It's the only thing that can calm her down. Okay, she's not out there running. She's not out there exercising. She might do some push-ups and sit-ups in the crib, and that's about it. The only thing that's going to calm her down is the dick, okay? And you want to make sure you have the hardest, strongest dick you could possibly have to calm your girlfriend or wife down. It's the only thing you can do. Ladies, if you're listening right now, you're probably agreeing. You might need the dick to calm yourself down. So what are you going to do? You're going to tell your boyfriend to get that blue chew. Fellas, make sure you blue chew. Make sure you're chewing that ass out during this quarantine. Okay, bluechew.com. You know the promo code is always flagrant. Bluechew.com, the promo code is flagrant. And you know what they're going to do for a limited time? They're giving it to you free. All you got to do is $5 shipping. That's it. They're giving it to you free. $5 shipping. That's it. Ship it right to your crib. Okay? And you take that package. You deliver it to your woman. All right? You deliver it to your woman in a way that's going to make her calm, going to make her grateful, going to make you happy, happy home, happy wife, happy life. Okay? Make sure this quarantine goes as smoothly as possible. You blue chew that thing. Chew it out. Do what you have to do as a man. Treat your wife right. Treat your girl right. Treat your side right. Whatever it is. Make sure you pass this time. Okay? It's hard to get cardio out here. You got to bring the cardio to the bedroom. Bluechew.com. Flagrant is the code. Now we're not done yet. After you get that nice workout, right? After you're doing all that lifting at home with them dumbbells, okay? After you're stressing your body, after you're doing all those push ups, using these muscles you've never used in your life, doing burpees, you know, doing these jumping squats, jumping lunges, all this other shit that we never did. Those muscles are going to be sore, right? Akash, what do we do with these sore muscles? Yo, the best thing to do is to buy the Power Dot. I power actually, Dot. Personal experience with this. I I think we talked about this on the podcast maybe. It's mm. quarantine. You can't work out. I went jogging because it's the only way I could be active. Mm. My body not built for jogging. No, it's not. I haven't jogged in years. I was so embarrassingly sore. My calves were killing me. I could barely walk. Whatever, I came here. I took the Power Dot home. Let's go. Super portable case. It's like the size of a CD wallet that we used to have in middle school. And put it on my calves. Felt better the next day. The Power Dot combines, and I read about this before I used it, two different technologies. There's one called Neuromuscular Electric Stimulation, right. NMES, and there's one called TENS. Right. And TENS is what helps with recovery. Right. They literally, Al, I think you were saying they use it at physical therapy yep. offices. I looked up independent studies that says this is effective. They combine both technologies, so you speed up recovery, and if you speed up recovery, you improve athletic performance. You use it in PT. It's great to rehab from actual injuries. Um, they're very straightforward on how to use it. They give you very like clean instructions. I got an app that you use. It's great. Uh, athletes use this. Like everybody's using this. You can't get a massage now. All you people out there that get these like uh, professional massages or sports massages or all these types of massages, it's not happening. The masseuses are shut down. You can't work out those muscles that get so tense and tight after you exercise. It's quarantine time, baby. So you got to find someone else going to do it. Power dot. Power dot. Simple as that. 
And uh, for U.S. customers, you get a free 30-day trial wow. plus an additional 20% off for our listeners. Wow. So you try it for 30 days, and if you like it, you still got 20% off. And I if mean, not, just send it back. I mean. Go to power.com uh, slash flagrant. That's powerdot.com slash flagrant. And use the code flagrant at checkout. You get that 20% off. Again, that is powerdot.com slash flagrant and the code flagrant 20% off. Look at that. Look at that. Full heads of hair, hard dicks, and relaxed muscles. That's what you get when you listen to this podcast. And let's get back to the show. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting situation. Now, I haven't seen the video, but there's another story that's going around that's that's really uh, interesting for multiple reasons. One, uh, it's an NBA player getting their dick sucked on Instagram live. Yeah. And two. Oh, it was live. Was it? Yeah, it was live, right? It know. was on the story. Oh, I didn't hear about this. Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray, there's a video of him getting head. I think he put it on his story, and then he deleted it. But, like, you have to make two decisions to put it on your story. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's not an accident, right? It's like you record it, and then there's another button that you press, and then it goes on your story. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like you can record, then your thumb slips and, like, hits it. <laughs> you have to go, all right, that's me getting my dick sucked. And I'd like it on my story. And it asks you, it goes, would you like to put it on your story? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, it's almost like Mark Zuckerberg is like, you sure you want to get your dick sucked <laughs> on your story? And then um, Jamal Murray said, yes. Uh, I got to see this video. I haven't seen the video. Have I you have seen not. It? Oh, no. no. But don't you want to see that NBA mm, dick? Now that you mention it. We got to see mind. what NBA mm, dick <laughs> looks like. Canadian NBA dick. Canadian NBA. I'm a little bit less interested. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Canadian black dick. What is that? Just like American white dick? <laughs> is, that, is it wrong to think that Canadian black dick is smaller than regular black dick, Al? Now that we're thinking about black dick. <laughs> it depends on what kind of Canadian you are. If you're like the West, like you're like the the West Indian Canadian, like, yeah, that's what oh, like first Trinity. generation. Some Jamaicans. Oh, no, 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 no. If you're from yeah. Jamaica. Yeah. Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> if you have like that Abba and preach from <laughs> John Mate well, just like, like like Abba and preach. No, he's Haitian, son. Yeah, Haitian and Somali. That's West Indian, right? So Say they, what? They scrubbed this shit from the internet because I can't. I said it. West Indian. They scrubbed it from the internet. Yeah. Damn, son, it's like me washing my hands, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, it's getting that COVID off my. It's fingers. mad easy to find that now. <laughs> if that's the case, literally so, just type it in Google. Yo, son, that's what I'm saying. They scrub. I might it. have to I'm make wrong. a phone call to some NBA peoples to see if we have that. <laughs> okay, do that. You do know that. what I'm saying? We might have to call the the, the Nuggets organization <laughs> and uh, see if we can get a picture of that dangalang. No, the girl was sucking a dick. Hey, I'll come. Sucking that thing. Sucking that thing. How fast can you say sucking a dick? Sucking a dick. Oh! Son, it's, yo, I that's think the about fastest it time, dick. yo. Say it again. Say it. Oh, dick. you got it? I'll got it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, white girl going, hey, my time. It says wife. It says wife? Now, girls, if you want to know how to get an NBA player, <laughs> watch this immediately. If you want to know how to get an NBA, is he uncirked? Come on, Canada. <laughs> okay, she is going full throat on it. No, she she got a couple. No, no, no. She throated that thing with no hands, full throat, no hands, not even directing it in a certain way. <laughs> so this guy is that's a wild son. boy, bro. That's a wild boy. That's a wild it. boy, bro. Like, Run it, it back. Let me take it. my dick off. <laughs> my dick off. Let me take my dick off my body. Oh fuck. I like that. Yo, she knows how to do it though. Bop, bop, focus. bop, She's focused. bop, bop. Making eye contact. You know what I mean? Yo, she's looking at me. It feels like right. <laughs> that shit got intimate. She just moved her own hair out the way. Let's go, Megan. Is she a Kentucky ball player? No, I think she's uh, well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, she literally grabbed balls and shaft at the same time. Whoa, that move was crazy. Yeah. L listen, I had to readjust. You Ladies, have to do the, if you are listening you to do right that now. John Madden thing where you go back and forth on the, on the game film. <laughs> Let's Boom. run that back there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's run that back there and get the bottom of that play. <laughs> Ladies, if you want to know how to get an NBA player, or ladies, if you're asking yourself while you're in quarantine alone, why you don't have a quarantine bay and why your quarantine bay is not in the NBA, look at the way that girl sucks dick and then look at the way you suck dick and therein lies the answer, okay? <laughs> there is a distinct difference between the way girls that are alone in the quarantine suck dick 
and the and the way that girl sucks dick because she is sucking a dick. She's oh, sucking, gosh. Sucking, she's sucking a dick. She's sucking a dick. Sucking a dick. You are fucking fast with it, dude. Yo, I'm telling you, top of mind. Doug, I almost busted watching, and that guy was just holding steady that whole time. So. Bro, hey, it ain't nothing new for this man. Yeah, you he's an right. NBA ball player, yo. Oh, man. What? what? I mean, I'd rate that like a six. I mean, shut up, Son, Al. bro. That's a six. That wasn't Al, even a, shut That wasn't up. That impressive. I'm just saying. Al, shut the fuck up. Have you seen up. Superhead? There was no basket motion. There was no. There was one basket. She was doing a single hand basket. Yeah, that's. That's, that's yeah, Jamal six. Murray got enough baskets for everybody, man. Come on. <laughs> it was not a six. That's for his Al, ego. Stop hey, it. Hey, hey. Uh, we've all watched porn. Stop acting like you're the only person that's seen sucking the dicks. Okay. Before. And compared to regular porn, that was a six. Bring a 10 up. Sigh. Bring a 10 up. Ooh, we we go really see if there's double, almost double better. All right. That's crazy. This guy's a fucking <laughs> crazy person. Like, we all haven't seen the whole same goddamn porn. We all see the superhead <laughs> shit. Why is Andrew taking such a I know, right? Nah, I'm fucking pissed off. You're trying to act like you get the best dick sucks. Oh, I get the best dick sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, sometimes your ego be coming out of some odd shit. Yo, too. I don't like it, bro. I get better dick sucks! <laughs> I didn't like that shit. I feel like Tom Brady, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Brady right there. I'm going to Tampa. Hey, if there's one guy that knows about exploiting young Jewish people. Who's uh, that? You gotta be Al, right? <laughs> Little scrappy white people. I mean, get him to do what you want. <laughs> Wait, what did Al do? White women? I mean, it's women oh, in this case, but. Damn, Al, I didn't know that you were so, exploiting the Jewish this, community. This is- it's weird looking up porn in a room full of guys right now. This Especially usually, when you're looking up best head. I know, it's like an alone activity I usually like to peruse. Are you looking? <laughs> but are you looking up, is it like gender? Does not matter what gender? <laughs> <laughs> like, if we're really going for the best, oh, right? Yeah, we, if we if were, it's a physical activity, guys are going to be the best at it. If you really want to know the best right. porn, you might have to look up some dude dick suck suck on a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I would just pull it up just to make Akash scream. No, 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 be chill. It's mad easy chill, for me. I got chill. my back to the thing. Chill. Honestly, chill, I support chill, this chill, chill. movement, Al. Al, Al, chill out. Don't put no porn on the thing. Al, don't put no. Hey, Al, Al! 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 That's black on black crime, Al. Oh, he oh, no, looked up I gay black porn. He looked up gay black porn. So, so let me guess. I can't even look at it to so get it off the screen. So, Al, so, so you only fuck white girls, but your porn is black on so, black gay, dog? Hey, hey. Oh, man. No, we the best. I got to take my scarf off, dog. I can barely <laughs> breathe up in this bitch. Oh, Al said we the best. <laughs> Oh, God, man. That oh, really made fuck. me feel uncomfortable, Al. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. All right. Fast forward. All right. We got it. Yeah, we got it. Fast that forward. Whole video. We already started to fast forward. Let's, yeah, fast forward to the next topic. Uh, was there something else that you truly wanted to uh, touch on uh, before we uh, bring in our, our guests, our, our newly famous guests? Um, we should talk about the online stuff that's happening, like the social media stuff that's happening during this quarantine, like all the people going on live. Yo. Uh, this is what the whole quarantine is going to ex- yeah. expose, I think, is there's going to be some real fucking winners. Yeah. DJ D-Nice is the biggest winner yes, he's in it. epidemic and pandemic history. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, DJ D-Nice is a DJ who's been DJing for a couple of decades, I think. I remember hearing his name in like a Tribe Called Quest song. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Something to D-Nice to your rescue. He's like, this is an old school guy. Yeah. A guy that you would figure would have no fucking imprint on social media. When the quarantine happens, he just says, yo, we're going to have a party. I'm going to DJ for nine straight hours or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. That's what he, he he'll marathon forever. It, and he just starts DJing. And then it becomes this fucking like global movement. I'm watching his IG live. Jonah Hill is commenting. Netflix is commenting. Motherfucking, you told me Michelle Obama Michelle was on Obama, there. Michelle Obama, Oprah was in there. He went from 430. I've started watching that night. He was up to like 40,000 people were streaming or something. He had like 400,000 followers on IG. The next day I checked, he had a million. Yeah, followers yeah overnight doing it killing it and then quest love appropriated idea. the idea oh yeah and did? i started seeing him get all this love i'm like yo how's this not appropriation i mean everybody started like the moment people saw that it's like oh i just saw about six different lives going on at one time right now if you open instagram it's mad lives yeah lives are popping yeah now yeah. i have to say we have the hottest live though we do have the hottest live we got the hottest live the talent show corona's got talent yeah yeah simple as that yeah. Hottest live. 
You got a little comment in the somebody commenting in the IG live. Oh, I mean, Biebs was in there. You know <laughs> yo. what I mean? My man, yo. Justin Biebs. But that's regular. <laughs> that's regular, regular. What was, what was, what was Who the needs comment? Michelle Obama when you got the Biebs? You got yo, the Biebs. And you ain't huh? wrong about it, yo. <laughs> Say what? You ain't wrong about it, that's yo. That's what I'm saying. That's what Canada's Michelle Obama did. I'm sorry. That felt bad. <laughs> Uh, it's quarantine. We can keep it 100. We can keep it 100 in quarantine well, she now. She got some guns, though. She still got guns. She Yo, can take me. Her she can, she can ain't me, fucking so. with the beeps. <laughs> 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 Beebs a joy, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Beebs is a joy. Yo, Beebs a joy on the inside and out. <laughs> Son. I'm just saying, Corona's got talent, yo. We had the stripper pose popping. Mm. That's crazy. We had the magic show. I'm not going to front. The magic show was unbelievable. Yep. I told really? you. Really? We had a dude do magic. Yep. And there was a guy, this guy goes to me, he goes, pick a card through the camera. Yeah. I go, you can see it on my live, on my Instagram right now on the story while it's still up. He goes, pick a card through the, the camera. I go, all right. I go pick a card. You don't pick a card, obviously. Yeah. He goes, now, what is it? I think about what the card is. Yeah. I go, nine of hearts, right? He goes, don't say what it is, but just think about what it is. No, no. Matter of fact, he asked me what card it is. Mm -hmm. He goes, now put it back in the deck. He looks through the deck. There's one card that's flipped over. The fucking nine of hearts. You don't sound impressive from here. I gotta see it on the you live. Kinda, you kind of have to see it, yeah. Because it, it just sounded like because you're not. I'm not seeing you virtually do the the card pulling. I can't picture that. Pick a card. Yeah. Say it. Nine of hearts. Say any card. Ace of spades. Any card. He just did. Ace of spades. <laughs> he specifically. <laughs> wrong with he guy? specifically said in the live, not the ace of spades. Okay, oh. you didn't tell me that. Yeah, you just said it, it again. To him. Doesn't matter. Go on. <laughs> okay, Go. four of clubs. Four of clubs. Imagine I took out a deck of cards right now and I start shuffling, nine shuffling, just going through the deck of cards, and there's one card that's flipped over, right? It's mm -hmm. one card that's actually face down, mm -hmm. and then I pick up that card and it's the four of clubs. <laughs> Don't sound that odd to me. Yo, this is like Whoa, Andrew, you I give it a way right now. I give it a six, I yo. You jumped off the stage and you saw I'm trying to make up where he's lax. <laughs> I give it a six. If I had a fucking flute and a cobra came out of a basket, this guy would lose his goddamn mind. That's not mind. that impressive but to me. I would I'm not a lot of people happens, who could do that. Then all of a sudden it's no big deal. A fucking cobra <laughs> does what cobras do. Yeah. If there's a cobra right here. Instead of me falling on the ground, I'm falling outside. Because I'm going to fuck out of here. I just watched a white girl take down a cobra. So I'm not <laughs> worried about nothing. <laughs> anyway, listen. Um, Corona's got talent. You know, some people appreciate magic. Some people appreciate art. Okay. This guy's at home folding fucking socks with his girlfriend. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on IG live and that's going to be my talent. Yo, you know why he's upset? Because we had Neil Manda in there. And they were going, yo, oh, is this yeah, no, no, I, I got love for Neil. Yo, love he for do that. look like <laughs> so, Someone, said, look like someone you, said he looked like shitty Akash. <laughs> Just to Neil, yo. <laughs> he looked like Akash, but he's sick. Which <laughs> <laughs> is half Akash the year. Is sick. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, boom. So let's go. Um, listen, uh, is there anything else that that you wanted to discuss? There was something else I think you said you had a good, a good take on. Um, yeah. Oh, so the NBA. There's two NBA teams. One of whom is the Sixers. Yep. I remember the other team, but they are cutting NBA employees to four days a week, mm. and then they will dock their pay accordingly. Mm. So Ooh. you're losing twenty percent of your check. Does that include players or just? It's uh, like full time employee salary, like full time. Okay. Uh, full-time employees yep, that are there, yep. nine to five, whatever yep, office yep. guys. I think the more companies do this, this will be good in the long run. Oh, because salaries are always going to adjust up. Okay, but if in the same way a ton of people are working from home, and a lot of offices are going to be like, "Oh, we could just have you work from home whenever you want. Yeah. We don't need you in the office," and that's going to be better in the long run. Going down to a four-day work week, if everybody does that, a lot of companies are going to be like, "Hey, maybe we don't need people to come in five days a week." And once this shit is over, there's a possibility we might start transitioning to a four-day work week because it's like, oh, we got just as much done. We're just not wasting fucking time anymore. Outside of four-day work week, how many people really need to be in the office? Like once we realize how this all the time. effective you can be from your home and how costly real estate is I don't in a big fucking city, understand why companies so, insist on it. So that's the thing. It's like you have what's called a brick and mortar, right? Like you actually have the business has its stores like on, you know, Fifth Avenue and yeah. these type of things. A lot of these places are loss leaders, right? Yeah. Meaning that they lose money, but you want to have a face, right? This makes sense for retail. 
it doesn't make sense for an advertising agency. I don't understand. You can have a small office. Right. Or you can have these workspaces. But for the most part, you can stay home, do your work at home. And then when you're doing your work at home, you can carve out your own fucking schedule. Take your lunch. when You want to take your lunch. You have to be on certain calls. It's very easy. Or decide to work in a communal workspace. And what if, hypothetically speaking, you and all your friends work together, but you have different jobs. So now me, let's say we have corporate jobs. You me and Alex work for different companies, but we decide to share a workspace. Yeah. So that means we take our lunches together. That means we go out, do a workout class, do whatever we want. We don't have to work with the fucking dickheads that are in the office you don't get along with. You actually work with people you like being around. Yeah. This makes perfect sense. WeWorks is apparently not doing well. I've looked at WeWorks for the past. I thought it was going to win. I was uh, wrong about WeWorks. I was like, that's what it's going to be. We don't need offices. You just need a place you can rent out every once yeah. in a while when I got to get you together. Well, WeWork is not working well because they put themselves out as a tech company, not a real estate company. Uh, okay. And I think tech companies get this crazy evaluation. They get like a 25 to 1 evaluation. Uh, and they really don't have any tech. No, you're, you're a real estate company. You're a real estate company. So it's space. like, exactly. That's all you have is space and you rent it out. So if they came out with their IPO, right? Yeah. And they were just like, hey, we're just a real estate company. So it's whatever real estate is, one to one or five to one yeah. or whatever that is. Then I think they would have done fine. But when they said we're a uh, tech company and then their evaluation came out way lower than they mm -hmm, thought, right. they're going to get crushed. But to me, that's what it... There's a, another move there where you just have office space that people will run out for one hour, two hours at a time, Work whatever. Work with the people you like. That can be their motto. That can be their slogan. Right. Work with the people you love. Yeah. Just go to you and your, I mean, you can go to work with your wife, go to work with your boys. You could switch who you go to work with. You could literally go, hey, what do you guys, what are you guys doing Wednesday? You guys want to work together? Yeah. Hey, well, let's get the WeWork, blah, blah. All you need is the internet connection. Yes. So it's a great idea. I think they just expanded too quickly. We work. They, they got yeah. hungry. Yeah. And the yeah, money was ways. cheap. They got greedy. If you, if you go tech to get a higher valuation, to me, that's just, oh, you got greedy. Yes. You didn't want to take the long the real estate road. 100%. So you got some, greedy. Some of the earlier WeWorks, like the one on um, like 14th Street around there. Okay. Uh, like it's always packed. I like deal with a couple people in there. It's always fucking packed. And then the one in Brooklyn, Williamsburg, which is fairly new, always empty. Yeah. The so Dumbo like, one? There's like yeah, a, yeah. The Dumbo yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So got like, greedy. Yeah, they like got they greedy. They just expanded too big, yeah. And, and it was easy to expand, right? Because the economy was fucking humming and money was so cheap. Like, you could get money from anybody because they're like, yeah, I want to invest in something. Everything's good. But uh, so maybe now when it downsizes, maybe now it will work out better. But I love the idea of fuck the office. Do your own work on your time. Choose the people you want to work with. Hey, do you work better alone? Then you just get your own little fucking cubicle. This Knock is, it out. And I've been op weirdly optimistic about like, hey, this is all going to be for the best in the long run. Yeah. I do think some of these benefits, four day work week might be optimistic, but work from home is going to be more of a thing. Like in 10 four day years, work week is sick, dude. It could be if they How can make this could work. We do that. I've been wanting that for the longest. Like, and I've worked corporate America f since I was like 16, 17. Um, it's so easy to switch. You Add just two hours two a day. Hours to the day. That's I mean, it. think about it. We went to school, high school. Right? Yeah. Um, elementary through high school, five days a week. Yeah. We get into college. Yeah. Nobody Immediately, yeah. we turn it into a four day school week, right? Yeah. Most of you guys, at least that's what we did. We went through for Tuesday, Thursday classes, and then like Monday, Wednesday labs or whatever the fuck they yeah. were, right? So you have a Monday <clears> through Thursday thing. It was very easy. It was like. We have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but people would always try to stack so they would have one or two days off. Always. Yeah. Sure. So it's like. If we know how functional it is and we know how easy it is to make that shift and we didn't think that there was any less learning per se going along, yeah, I think it really worked. Now, the question is what happens to those jobs that, matter of fact, yo, it might even be more functional for businesses because you go four days a week full time and then you hire people for three day a week part time oh, and businesses shit. can save money because you don't got to pay part time employees yeah. benefits, health insurance, all that kind of shit. And you know what? Four day a week, give me eleven hours. Yeah. Or what is it? A forty hour work week? It's ten. Ten hours. Give me a ten day. hours. Yeah. What they've been doing to us now is making it a kind of fifty hour work yeah. week. Yeah. But it's like, you want me to put in fifty? I'll I'll do four. What is that? Twelve hour days? Yeah. I could do four eight to eights. No, but a lot of these jobs are doing salary, <clears throat> and so you can do a ten day, ten hour day. It's like you still get salary. Paid yeah, they yeah, don't pay right. you overtime and they'll work you harder. And that's it would also kind of safeguard against that if it's a four day work week because you can only work a person in one day so, so much. much and then expect them to come back two, so three boom, more days. Give me four 12 hour days and then a three day weekend every day. 
dude, that's great for common. Now you that's got people nurse, going out. You got schedule. one extra brunch. Yeah. Right? You got one for, for restaurants and shit. You got one extra. In terms of consumption, it's hard to consume when you're working all fucking day. Nightlife is going to pop, dog. Wednesday night. Yo, if you're in college, what's the big party night? Thursday, Thursday night. How about we just make that everywhere? Boom. Yeah, dude. I think as crazy as this seems, four-hour work week is, is more fun. Now, there are certain things that need staff, right? Banks need staff. The post office needs staff. Uh, courts need staff, right? Like, there are certain things you actually need people there five days. Because let's say you get arrested on Thursday. Now you're going to spend fucking Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the tombs. Yeah. So there's certain things that might change a little bit, but the regular corporate sector, fuck yeah, dude, four-hour work week. percent So we go into freelance where we work seven hours a week right when every motherfucker is about to work four hours a week. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, but we still got a nice situation. Even though working seven days a week, it's still like you pick the hours you want to work. We're our you're, own we're boss. Not, we're well, not you try biking to work in the rain and cold. That, <laughs> <laughs> we work as hard as we want to work. Exactly. This is our yeah. choice. We could yeah. do four four days a week. 100%. Yeah. Um, talking about bosses. Talking about kings. Talking about royalty. Hmm. You know what I mean? Um, we have a special guest today. Right. Um, fresh off... Of his Netflix series, right, The Tiger King. Okay. Oh shit. We have the one and only Joe Exotic coming into oh, the studio. Oh shit. Today. This was shit. very difficult oh, to get. Oh shit. It's very difficult to get because he is currently incarcerated. So we had to find a way to get him out of prison. He snuck him out. Snuck him out. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's where Edin is. To the, say again. That's where Edin is. If that's anybody where... can sneak people across walls, <laughs> boom. There we go. We got it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We got one on the inside. Um, Tiger King. Tiger King, can you please come join us? Did you hear that growl just now? I heard a growl. <laughs> okay! Oh, we got the Tiger King in the building. Everybody yeah. fresh off his Netflix um, series and success. I, I motherfucker took my shirt, son. son. <laughs> Yo, let the Tiger King live for yeah, a second, bro. bro. So, Man, bro got a prison. He needed clothes. Word. Tiger King. <laughs> um First of all, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I know you must be getting crazy uh, amounts of media. <laughs> you got to stretch those legs out for that Prince Albs. Yeah. That Prince Albs is big time. I got all this Prince Albert in here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why is your ear blue, dog? Is it, what do you mean? That ear is... Something's wrong with that ear. What do you mean? Oh, shit. What's wrong? No, no. In all seriousness... Yo, you, do something that, with that. Yo, yo, your ear looks it's, infected, it's blue. P. Hold on. It's blue, yo. It's blue for real. <laughs> like, That's my ear piercing. It's and blue, dog. That's my ear piercing. What's wrong? No, nah, no. Nah, did you really... Nah, do you know that's happening right now? Nah. Because it's really bad blue. Yo, real talk. <laughs> did you just clip it or did you get, pierce... Get my no, ear no, piercing no, out. Look, look at this. Look at this. Someone get my ear piercing out right now. <laughs> get it out right now. Hold on. Come on, get it out, boy. Got Yo, there's coronavirus in his son, earlobe, son. Son. Okay, Tiger King. Get, I get the get, the get both of them off, Tiger King. Get because both of my piercings off. Son, did you put this through your fucking ear? I don't think so. so Bro, what the? Fuck? <laughs> Dude, you have a hematoma son. on your ear, Tiger King. I'm really concerned about you, man. Get son. This is white boy, white boy, son. Bro, you oh my lord. Yo. Yo. Just no. take shit to another level. Y'all almost, okay. you almost sacrificed your fucking ear for this, Tiger King. We really appreciate <laughs> that. So, Tiger King. Okay, so you have this amazing Netflix uh, series that's that's out, and uh, and and you've taken some time out of your you know lengthy prison sentence to come in here and talk to us about what you experienced. Right. Um, first of all, where did this love of tigers come from? Because I hated pussy, so I got into tigers. You know, that's kind of what happened growing up. <laughs> dude, I, what a character, bro! What a character <laughs> this guy is, dude. So, uh, so you get into you hate pussy so much, so you get into you are a gay man. That's true. Yeah, gay a man. lot of people they might not know that within the first couple episodes, but you are like super gay. And I hope you don't think we have a problem with that because we actually work with a gay guy. His name is Mark. He's not here right now. But yeah, right, yeah, 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 Work yeah. with a gay dude. <laughs> that, Sounds that like true. a handsome kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really like him. You really like him. You would love <laughs> this guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, How many guys, teeth does he have? Say again? How much teeth does he have? Oh, full oh, mouth full of teeth. Ah, oh, right. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can make some room. Yeah. All right, right. <laughs> so um, now you're known for taking guys, straight guys, yeah. and then making them gay while they're with you. Yeah, I, it's called dick flipping. Dick flipping. Yeah. Okay, flipping a dick. Yeah, flipping a dick. <laughs> flipping a dick. Yeah, oh, gosh, how flipping. fast can you say that? Flipping a dick. <laughs> Damn, oh gosh, that's good. Okay, so um, how do you flip a dick? 
it's a lengthy process flipping a day i'll tell you what uh you got to bring them in you got to ask them first i'll ask them i'll say hey how straight are you yeah right okay. so here we can practice what is he straight or is he uh, he's in the kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. all right so i'll say how straight are you yeah. mostly yeah. straight mostly straight all right well when you watch porn do you want the big one or do you want the little one i want that big one so you're not that straight. <laughs> and then I fuck them. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's pretty much the no, whole. That's funny because when you said that, I was like, that's a good point. That's a good yeah. point, I guess. Now, so, yeah, we now, get you hooked on meth, then you fuck them. That's oh, pretty oh, much there's it. a meth thing, yeah, too. Yeah, the you meth just, thing. You skip the step. Yeah. <laughs> so do you, do you look for the guys that have meth? Is that part of it? No, nah, you didn't need them to want meth. And then uh, and then if they just want an interest in I meant, sorry, have, uh, have a meth addiction. That's what I meant. Eh, anyone can have a meth addiction. That's the way I see it. I'm an equal opportunist. You know, but do I'm, they need like a meth curiosity at least? Nah, I don't even think so. they need more like a tight little waistline and some big some big balls. That's all they need. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm looking for. <laughs> Why do you like the big balls, Tiger King? Because you know they're just fun to play with, and uh, you know I I remember at at uh, at uh, Travis's funeral he used to just rub his big balls on my face, so uh, it just reminds me of. Uh, you know, it just reminds me of him. Was that what you thought was most appropriate to share at his funeral of all the things that you guys did together, of all like the times you connected? Yeah, I just wanted I just wanted his mom. His mom was there, so I wanted her to you know, to hear that fun story of us. And I also wanted her to hear my new song, uh, Hear Kitty Kitty that I sang at the funeral. So in the actual uniform that I wore in the music video. So I wanted everyone to hear that. Yeah. Just in case those clips were maybe used on the news or something, then people could reference that song. Yeah, I take a so I take a very social media approach to my content. You know, I make small content clips, I subtitle them and I put them out on YouTube. You know, yeah. that's how I revolutionized the animal game. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, Listen, sounds brilliant to me. Yeah. I, I mean anybody who would take that approach with their industry is probably a king. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I would call them the king myself. So yeah. this guy is just fucking one of the <laughs> one of the greats, really one of the greats, you know, and then a quarantine might happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then everybody in the animal you know, game might probably start doing what you're what you're talking about. Yeah, bitch you know, Carol. Right? Yeah, oh, this bitch Carol okay. down in Florida. Tell us about this bitch Carol, man, because she seemed to be causing so many problems for you, bro. You she really bothered you. Yeah, she yeah. you in a certain this way. bitch. Carol. Do it, you think it's because like she knows she could never have you because you're not interested? I don't know what exactly it is. I mean, her her hubby Howie is is a is, is quite a looker, so I'm interested in him. But I think, <laughs> as far as Carol goes, I just think she's jealous of all the Cubs that I have. I really think that's it. I think she's jealous of the Cubs. I think that bitch is a murderer too. Yeah, she killed her husband down right. there in Florida. You saw right. that, right? Yeah. yeah, she fed him to the tiger. So I think she's just jealous of what yeah. I have. What yeah. do you think it is? Um, yeah, I think she killed her. I think she killed her husband. A hundred percent. I think uh, I think she's jealous of you because you found a way to get your husband to kill himself, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, and like that's a skill. That's why you're the king. Uh, and she's king. not. She's just some bit, you know, cat rescue bitch. Yeah. Right. That's correct. Um, I think that she was a, a fucking piece when she was younger. She was a dime. Yeah. Did you think that? I know that you don't look at them like that. Yeah, I mean, I can see it. I can definitely see it. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm also pissed at her because she stole the name of our company. What was the name of your company? Big Cat Entertainment. And what was the name of hers? Big Cat Rescue. I mean, if I had to go see something... I would see Big Cat Entertainment, right? I want to be entertained. I don't want to see a cat get rescued. Who cares nah. about rescuing? Yeah, nah. rescue implies there's something wrong. It's the worst part of the cat, is rescuing it. Yeah, is rescuing don't, it. Yeah, you don't have to ju don't judge the cat that it needs your rescue. Yeah. Now, can you talk to us about Doc Antle a little bit? Because oh, he I'm, was one of my favorite characters. I love Doc Antle. Doc Antle was my mentor. What did you like about Doc Antle? I'll, Soul I'll tell patch. Him. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that he called part. himself God. I thought that was nice. Yeah, yeah Bhagavan. Yeah, Bhagavan yeah, yeah. Doc Antle. What is it? Bhagavan? Bhagavan, Bhag 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 yeah. Bhag Wait, say it again? Bhagavan. It's Bhagavan is how he spelled with a V, but oh, Bhag Bhagavan. I think it's Bhagavan. Yeah, you're closer. <laughs> I think it's Bhagavan. It's he like say that, that kid rocks on. Bhagavan, 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 The parking lot garage. <laughs> okay, so. You're so um, cultured. So, Doc uh, Antle. Doc Antle. Yeah, Doc Antle. Now, did you feel while watching this documentary that the, the documentarian, the director of the documentarian, did you think that he, <laughs> that he liked. Doc Antle or dislike Doc Antle? What do you think that his personal opinion on Doc was? I don't know. I mean, Doc Antle's one of those guys, you like him or you love him. You know, that's that's what we say. And how'd you, you know? feel? 
I loved him, he man. He was my mentor. I love that man, Doc. Did Antle. you ever think about trying to fuck? No, oh, never. No, he had uh, all these ladies. You know, he was able to train the tigers and train the women, right? <laughs> <laughs> Legend. <laughs> Is that where you learned to train your your yeah, boys? Yeah, we were in a little competition there, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he would get these young girls. I would get these young boys. Yeah. And, uh, now he didn't need meth. Yeah, but women are easier to tame. Ooh, so, interesting. If you had to compare men and women to animals that you have to tame. What's a man and what's a woman? Yeah, well, a man's like a tiger or a lion. A woman's like a lemur or a snail. <laughs> 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 What? Why? <laughs> why, is a, why? Why is a woman like a snail, <laughs> Tiger King? Well, you know, if they sit there, scoot around, they leave a little trail. You know. That's <laughs> <laughs> and that way, if they try to get away, we, you can always follow yeah, them. Yeah, right? exactly. You're easier to follow. Right, so. right, right. I see. <laughs> there, I see you, sweetheart. Get yeah. back here. <laughs> You're in the closet again. Uh -huh. now, now, how do you come up with the amount of money that you pay them a week? We've noticed that the employees at these um, zoos got paid uh, a very minimal, minimal wage. I mean, right, right. you were paying your guys one hundred fifty dollars a week, one hundred twenty dollars a week. Yeah, was it one hundred twenty? Yeah, well, one hundred thirty-eight and sixty-seven cents. But yeah. Ah, well, one hundred fifty, I guess, minus right, the taxes, right? Yeah, right, right? Because you're a good law-abiding tax-paying citizen. Yeah, obviously, I'm not a criminal. <laughs> yeah, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would basically just ask them, "Hey, how much were you making in jail?" And then I would take whatever that number is and multiply it by like 20. And they were making like $1 and now they're making $20 a day. So that's so pretty they're good. they're looking at like a raise. Yeah, it's a huge promotion for them. Wow. And so yeah. that's, is that why you got people from prison? So it's such an easy inflation No, scale? of course not. I got people in prison because I care about people. And I wanted to give people a chance to you right. know bounce back and uh, right. find themselves and maybe get on meth and fuck me. So it's find like... dick? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, I'm just... Uh, yeah, I'm trying to p pull people up from their dick straps. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for the Tiger King? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you haven't put this together already, maybe you're listening uh, online, but if you're watching the video, I have to be honest with you because I've, I've always been honest with um, our audience, and I feel like that connectivity that we have is based on trust and truth. <laughs> we don't actually have the Tiger King here. I know you guys were fooled. I know you were fooled for a second. Pretty convincing, right? It was convincing <laughs> when you came in and, and your left earlobe was twice the size of your fucking forehead. And we stopped the whole interview. <laughs> because he, Dude, I don't even want to tell people what he was using as... Do you know those little key... key what are rings. they called? Key rings? Yeah. <laughs> this guy got mercury poisoning. Well, he like, definitely he has something. A hundred percent. Did you not listen to the electro thing that we were talking about the other day? What? That's how you get the. That's how you get the illness. Oh, that's the five G. That's the five G. Straight it's to going my right ear? to your fucking ear. So uh, we actually have Mark Gagnon in the building. He's joining us here. What's um, up, everybody? And and uh, so it's not the Tire King, but I do want to open this up for an interesting Tire King discussion because I was absolutely fascinated by the doc. Have you finished the doc? Yes. Okay. Al, have you come close to finishing it? Yeah, just about. Now, anybody who hasn't finished the co the documentary, there's nothing that is ruined by us talking about this. They tell you the ending at the beginning. Yeah, the documentary is not about the ending. The documentary is about the absolute craziness that transpires over eight episodes or seven episodes. Seven. Seven episodes of this show. Uh, if you haven't watched it, you can stop this podcast right now and go watch it. I would not be offended at all. You'll come right back to it because you want to have a conversation about this. There's some fascinating characters about it. If you don't know what's going on, you will within a day. Everybody's texting their friends. I, I don't think Netflix could have picked a more perfect time to drop this. Yeah. Because right now we want a fantastical form of distraction. And you cannot believe what this is is real. You cannot believe it. You know why I also think it's brilliant? You know what my main gripe with it was? What? It's too long. But if you're quarantined, you got nothing better you to do. You thought it was too long? I, I, maybe go, go I don't. on that for a second because I, 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 I was. Agree. It might be a personal thing where I don't like <laughs> Al these. I didn't see it at all. And he... No, what are you talking about? I got up to episode five. No, I saw his oh, face yeah? when yeah. he said, did you finish it at all? He goes, I, I came close. And then I just kind of smirked at him because I was like, I know he didn't enjoy it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, go, like, go, 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 maybe go, go, white go. people enjoy it more or something. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I have it there. They enjoy this shit way. But more. I don't like making a murderer. Did you notice how many black people were in the documentary? There was one? Yeah. Which one? It, the guy that was going to vote for Tiger King. 
Oh, yeah. That blew my mind. That blew my mind. He could be as good as any of us, is what yeah. I said. Yeah, yeah. And I think Doc Antle had a black girl or like brown girl or something. She was some kind of. No, nah, there was a dark girl. Yeah. There was a dark girl. And they start to look white. darker when there's none of them around. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone starts to look darker. That's how Sicilians are like, no, we're black. Really. <laughs> uh, but I just don't. Making a murder was another like seven part thing that I just quit on in episode oh, I love three. That too. Maybe it's a white thing. It might so, be because I was just like, I'm going to do this because we're talking about it. It's the number one show on Netflix right now. Yeah. Literally number one in America. Let's talk about it. Let's finish it. And it wasn't awful. Yeah. But I had to fight to get through it a little bit. Are you fight kidding? to get through this shit? This is optimal. I was white sad when it finished. <laughs> optimal white okay, people. Okay, go on this. Talk so to you me about us. White guys playing with guns and animals that can kill them. Yes. And then you have women, a uh, white women, complaining about shit that has nothing to do with them. Like, for example, uh, this bitch who's complaining about this. What this, this other bitch, guy's doing yo. with fucking this um, bitch. tigers oh, yeah. and shit like that. This Trying shit has nothing world. to do with her. The rescue. Bitch. She's just yeah. mad that she couldn't be the tiger bitch in the beginning because she just didn't have that. Game, so it's like, oh, now my thing is going to be rescuing tigers instead of trying to be. Uh, we'll talk about tiger. her later, but I don't yeah. necessarily agree with that. But continue your point. But this is just opti- optimal whiteness because it's just like white people, white boy, like at its most peak. It level. is peak white it's, boy fun. It's death defying shit. They're yeah. gay Caring about shit that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> Ain't yeah. that, that peak like white peak boy fun? White Guns, boy. animals, and fucking each other. Son, peak white boy. You go on black Twitter right now. Dude. We're looking at this shit. It's like, yeah, what the Can fuck? Can I just is say this? something? I was disgusted. Yeah, I really yeah, was. Al, I was so not a m- judgmental guy. I was so mad that this was something we had to watch for <laughs> this. I was, like, I'm tr- I'm trying to stay She's up for really this bullshit last this. night. So, <laughs> I'm trying to stay up for this bullshit last night. I was like, I can't believe Drew is this engaged in this bullshit. <laughs> I love my people. <laughs> I, I know. I love my do. people. I love you my do, culture, sir. bro. Yeah, bro. I, it is. First of all, I cannot disagree with you more. I think it's the best thing that's been on TV in the least ten years. <laughs> At least ten and years. You also love the Bachelor, so I listen. Makes sense. No, Bachelor's fire too, son. <laughs> yeah. The Bachelor's fire, bro. You don't yeah. think the Bachelor? What do you like on I've TV? Never, I've never watched Bachelor. What? I've never watched. You've been, you've been oh, a start. I'll tell you yeah, what. You're missing out. So uh, let me explain why it's so fucking amazing. Because it's wrestling, but real. Doc Antle is a wrestling character. Okay. The Tiger King is a wrestling character. Carol to a certain extent, is a wrestling character. Okay. All these people are extreme versions of human beings that you don't get to see. Like, you see a wildlife bitch every once in a while. Like, one of your friends really likes animals or something like that. Like, Whitney Cummings loves animals, right? And, like, we talk about animals. Even Whitney don't even like cats. But Whitney likes animals, yeah. right? And, like, you talk to them, you tease them, etc. But you never get to fully experience the extremes of this, right? Mm -hmm. A tiger trainer, we've heard of Sig 3 and Royd and these motherfuckers, but we're not talking about someone who owns 200 fucking tigers who it costs $10,000 a month to feed them. They don't have $10,000, so they're getting the Walmart food that falls off the back of the truck to feed them, and the employees are also eating the same food the tigers are eating. Like, (laughs) shit is so mind-boggling about this documentary. Oh, yeah, white trash at its absolute but That's that, what I think well, that's that minorities so would bad. like it because you get to see white people you can feel better than. So just turn on Maury. <laughs> Say again? Just turn on Maury. This is Maury with that. tigers! <laughs> <laughs> like, Maury with tigers? Yeah, How could you not like that? shit, so that's so, just like... That's it. That, that, that takes half nah, the population. <laughs> that's it. It's a, I think that minorities are too homophobic to appreciate yeah. the greatness in his characters. But what I loved about this is it showed that, like... To be honest, it showed a side of Southerners, and I think they tried to lean into this. But, like, there's always this idea of Southerners. Like, they're like, you know, ding, 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 ding. I'm spitting. I'm, I'm like, uh, spitting out my fucking dip. Um, I don't care about anything but my freedoms. One of your freedoms is you get to do whatever you want with your time. And I think that the show kind of demonstrated that these hillbilly ass hick southerners who are supposedly hanging black people from trees and beating the shit out of and murdering gay people not only were they okay with him being gay they actually were willing to vote for him for governor he came in third in the race just because he didn't give a fuck and he said what was on his mind and i really think that there's this fraction that's not even that small a fraction of Southerners that we've been told in New York and California that they're just super racist. They hate everybody that's not Christian, this, that, the other. But they were like, okay, he's gay, but as long as you do that shit at your house and I don't got to see it, I don't give a fuck. Mm. And they all went to his fucking Thanksgiving. They all went to his park. They took their kids to his park. They knew he was gay the whole time. And I thought it was this really interesting observation about like Southerners where you saw even those like the dudes that he was gay with, they weren't gay. 
They were addicted to meth, right? And mm-hmm. they were exploited, yeah. And they were exploited. But you really saw the exploitation happen on all on all levels. You know what this show is? What? It is White Trash Game of Thrones. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, oh gosh. Shit. What a fucking take. That's what it is. It is White Trash Game of Thrones. This Carol bitch is Cersei. Oh! Yo. Jeff is, is so Littlefinger. Oh! Uh, Akash with some hot fucking takes today. What's his name? The guy that snitched on the fe- to the feds? That's Varys. You know what I mean? Yes. He's trying to do the right thing. Look kind of no, like a the woman. Snitch- the motherfucker look like Fortune Feimster. I gotta be... <laughs> We gotta pull up a side by side, please. Tell me this ain't Fortune Five Star. Put it in the podcast. So no, in. Jeff Lowe yeah. is little finger. Little finger. Complete little finger. Exploits everyone, moves from person to person like a fucking oh parasite. My and God. he will eventually get his, but it's gonna take a long it's time. It's gonna take a while. So I was talking to uh Tim Dillon about um about these characters. Cause I, I was most fascinated in the whole Tire King were the characters of the con artists, the Jeff Lowe types. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, explain to me what they are, right? And Tim was kind of breaking it down. He goes, so these people are con men. Yeah. And they operate on the fringes of society, right? And they operate around pseudo-legal businesses. So owning a zoo is legal, but breeding the cubs is obviously illegal and selling these tigers is illegal. Right. So when that is the majority of your business, and that was the only way they could make money— you can't exactly get legal money to support that. Right. So when you need money and you need support, you have to go through illegal means. So what these people do who operate on the, like these fringe businesses, the Jeff Lowe types, is they find at-risk businesses. So just like an investment company would find an at-risk company, mm. you know, like uh, Mitt Romney has made all his money finding at-risk businesses or businesses that are uh, in debt, buying them, and then flipping them around. That's that's what – what is it, is a company called? Something Capital? Bain, uh, Bain, Bain or, Capital, oh, yeah. right? Literally all Bain Capital does. So Jeff Lowe is the illegal business side of Bain Capital, hmm. right? He goes in with confidence. He has maybe people who support him, right? Oh, I'll, I, I, I got you. I'm going to be your saving grace. Hey, th- you know what, Carol? There's a moment in the documentary where he goes, fuck Fuck you. We're American. We got to be free and we got to stand up yeah. for our freedoms and we're going to take you down or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And he pays a $35,000 something. There was some debt that was I don't even know. built up. I don't know. He basically writes a cashier's check, comes in to save the day. Oh, that's right. Yes. Right? Yeah. Takes them to Vegas and shows them all the cool Vegas shit. Right? Obviously, he's using the tigers to get some pussy and that kind of stuff, but he's running the con there. Oh, yeah. And the con starts, and the way that he's going to separate him from his business is you get in enough debt where you have to sign the business over to me. But I say, remember I saved you last time? Yeah, and it's just, look, you're already transferring ownership. Just transfer it to me. She can't get to me. And mm. why would you not transfer me? I, I, I spent that 35000 off my pocket to help you, to support you. And you know, when the, you. We know when he fully, when I imagine Joe Exotic's eyes lit up and was like, this is my savior, is that phone call. That's when it's fully set. Oh, this yeah. is the fucking guy he's who stood up. To this. He's got money. Yeah. He's going to do everything I want. He's on my side. This is America. He fucking tugs on your heartstrings with this is America. And you're a cunt, which is what he's been saying. Yeah. 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 And your fucking bitch husband or whatever. And then he's just like, this is the guy. Uh, this is my savior. And and what did the people at the park start saying? After that, it seemed like it was the Jeff show. Yeah. And and uh, Joe would do whatever Jeff wanted. He was kissing up to Jeff, etc. And what's What's really interesting about it is you can't feel too bad for Joe because that was Joe's plan with all the employees. With, with the uh, and with his husbands. Oh in particular. With, with his husbands, with yeah. his employees, yeah. and with the cats. Yeah. yeah. Joe was exploiting everybody. Yeah. And then so, as soon as he gets exploited. Yeah. So we can't feel too bad. No. Right? So no. his whole business is based on exploitation. Yeah. Right. Um then the this guy comes and exploits him, but he's aware of it. And that's how Jeff probably c- goes through his life. He goes, well, I don't have to feel too bad taking advantage of these people who take advantage of people for yeah. a living. Yeah. Right. They know the game. I'm just hustling you. Yeah. Comes in, separates him, get him. I mean, literally, uh, the Joe Exotic got his mom to spend her last. They barely show that. It's yeah. very. Did you guys see that part? Yeah. I might have zoned out. So it's felt, a very short that's part. Probably the only person I felt bad for in this entire thing. Son, yeah. The parents of both. He like he Carol's gets Carol's parents and Joe's parents. Wait, All what happened with Carol's parents? Not that? Carol's parents. Uh, her ex husband that she killed. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 yes. 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 They got they got yes. taken. Yeah, completely got taken. 
And, um, I mean, so he fucks over. He's a piece of shit guy. They make him seem nice and charismatic. I think they do a really good job of positioning to be him to be likable. And I think you need to do that or else we won't follow him. Yeah. But he's a piece of fucking human garbage. Yeah. Yeah. This guy. And, um... And, and when Jeff came in and, like, noticed and figured out and separated from the business was genius. And Tim pointed out something interesting. He goes, you could see the hustle being played again at the end with the Tim Stark guy. Yeah. Did oh, you yeah, guys yeah. get he to that? He brings him in. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll set this whole thing up. And then immediately it goes awry. Yeah. yeah. So so that Tim Stark is the other zoo yeah. guy. And they're going to build a zoo together where they're going to move the zoo. Yeah. And Tim's like, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to take our thing together. And he's going to provide this. And then Tim caught up to it. The yeah. Tim Stark guy. Yeah. Caught up to it. He goes, I'm doing all the building. I'm, I'm put up all the all money. money yeah. I'm providing all the animals. He hasn't done shit. I'm out. I think he pulled out because he realized the hustle. But that's the fucking hustle. Yeah. He knows that he can do business with Tim Stark because Tim Stark is operating illegally already. What you going to do? Rat me out? Yeah. You going to say that I stole your money to the government? Well, guess what I'll say? All these animals you're breeding? Right? Yeah. 100%. It's, it's like when you accept money from the mafia and then they start stealing from you. Who you go to? Yeah. You can't go to nobody. It's a fat. I would love to get like an expert. Maybe we'll have Tim call in and talk to us about this. But like, I'd love to learn about these con men. Yeah. And the balls that they fucking have. So right? I wonder what's your hierarchy of shittiness? In, on the show? Okay. Yeah. What did you go for? Well, I'm thinking like, I think Jeff was the shittiest one. Jeff is Jeff Lowe. Yeah. I thought Carol was the shittiest because she positions it as an animal yeah. rescue yes. and nothing about that seemed any different she's than the shittiest. any yeah, zoo. Yeah. Okay. She's go. The and. Why? So my my girl's a big like animal rights person, and a little bit of that is rubbed off. I feel a little bad for the cats, but generally speaking, whatever. I just yeah, don't yeah. like, hey, this is a rescue. Hey, guys, come pay money to watch whatever, and then you can look yeah. at the animals. Also, I'm making 25000 every week on Facebook, yeah. and it's a rescue, yeah. but in reality, it's just a zoo. And who played their employees the least? Oh, they, all their employees were uh, paid no, no, no. nothing. Volunteer. They're volunteers. They're volunteers. Right? Carol paid the Carol, least. Carol yeah. paid the least. That's a cult in itself. It yeah. is a cult, and she it's looks like a cult bitch. <laughs> And oh, hey there, cats and kittens. This is the other thing I was going to say. <laughs> my girl hops That's in. That's how we got to start every episode. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, cats and kittens. Yeah. My girl hops in like season, episode six or something. And she's yeah. like, what? Big Cat Rescue. I know that. That's where uh, there's this IG girl, Yo Ventura, who's always like petting baby tigers and shit. And she was like, I think oh, that's yeah. where Yo Ventura is oh. always going to pet the tigers. So your whole fucking point is you shouldn't be allowed to pet these animals. But there's this IG thought who can just come in and pet him whenever she wants. Oh, because so you're PR. You're doing the same shit, bitch. She, yeah. Don't think it's different. And we saw the videos where she used to be a breeder. Yeah. Yeah. She was just a failed breeder. It's like, oh, I don't know how to make this business work. So let me just go against everybody else. else and, and, doing. And, and to that point, if you noticed, and they, they had a little snippet of this at the end of the final episode. You know a lot about people based on their intentions when they start, right? Like yeah. when we all start comedy, we're very pure, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And then certain things might get in the middle of it, money gets in the way. Reality like kind of gets in the way. Reality gets in the way, whatever it is. But when you start, you're actually really pure with yeah. comedy, right? When Joe started, there's a little snippet, there's an old black and white footage yeah. where he goes, he goes, you know, these animals are only supposed to be in Asia and in India yeah. and, uh, we, you know, we got to control breeding and... You know, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, there's a little yeah, snippet I of him because yeah. he started pure, right? Yeah. yeah, and we'll get to why these people like are drawn to animals in general, but like th there was a real purity to him. Carol started impure, impure, yeah, yeah, and she found a mask for that impurity. I think with Joe, it was almost like the ring. Remember Lord of the Rings? Like the more you get addicted to the ring, yeah. the more the harder you to turn take into. Off. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what happened. It's like all of a sudden. You got 20 fucking tigers that need $10,000 a month worth of food. You go, I got to find a way to feed these motherfuckers. So you do the cub petting and then you do it more and more and it becomes more and more normalized. Yeah. And right. You're making a little money and why not? And what's also interesting is they talk at the end. Everybody could go right now. They got information. Joe Exotic is snitching on everybody. Oh, yeah. Everybody's in trouble except this bitch. She's the only She's one. fucking Marlo in the wire. Okay. Just, you. I'm <laughs> she, done. I'm clean. She's... She got it. Like, she's a criminal, like, master best, mastermind. Yeah, yeah. Best type. She killed her husband? Yeah. Yes, that's what you guys think she killed. 100% killed her husband. 100%. Yeah. You think? Yeah, I think so. Like, Why? no doubt in my mind that she did. I mean, it's just so convenient, and she benefited so greatly. Like, she had a motive. She had, like, a way to do it. And the will that said, yeah, upon will. death or disappearance. Yeah, so, the that will part shit? was like, come on, son. Yeah. 
Come on. That's what I was so like. Oh, explain this is that to anybody who's listening right now. So, shit. so you probably explain it better. But in her will, essentially, uh, or the will so that she, she was, had, she was written married for her to this husband. guy, right? Yeah. She was married to this guy, married to a multimillionaire, multimillionaire, many different business ventures. Uh, marriage he, is falling apart. Mar- but he was also interested in, in the animals first. Yes, right. And he liked these exotic animals, and then they both started to kind of get into it together. And he saw it as a business with the cub breeding. He wanted to do it in Costa Rica. Marriage starts to fall apart. He starts to get. Uh, concerned, he's like, "Yo, this bitch might kill me." Like, uh, I'm actually. Yeah. He starts to tell his. Try to file a restraining order. He files a restraining he order. Threaten to kill him, and he tells his assistant, "Yeah, hey, um, if anything happens to me, release this, yeah. right?" And what was that was in there? Was a will and testament or some shit like that? Um, last right, yeah, or, last uh, rights. Yeah, oh no, yeah. no, no! If he he goes, if anything happens to me. Release this, and it was him asking for a restraining order from his wife uh, yeah. that okay. was denied because you can't give a restraining order unless there's an actual threat. Right. She right. just said, "I'm gonna kill you." Saying you're gonna kill you is allowed because it's freedom of speech. Yeah. You're allowed to say that, yeah. right? I didn't know that. Joe. Oh, I thought, son, I thought that's a crime. maybe. If you watch it, you'd like it. <laughs> I get, I get really, all of a sudden, yeah, you're fascinated. You sounded like such a girlfriend. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking neck starts moving. <laughs> okay. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> so, getting the claws out. Here, here's some chocolate, babe. <laughs> so, um, maybe you fucking listened for once. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what's it called? So, um, where were we? Where were we? The, uh, with the will. restraining order. The so will, restraining order, everything like that. Uh, the husband, right before he goes to Costa Rica, he's about to go to Costa Rica to do this like cub thing where he wants to like breed these cubs, maybe take the whole zoo and take it down there where it's much more legal uh, or it's just not illegal yet because yeah. they don't know about <laughs> fucking human beings breeding <laughs> cubs. It's yeah. a brand new country. So he, uh, she basically kills him right when he was about to separate her from all his wealth. Yeah. Yeah. She kills him. And then there's his fucking will that's in a lockbox in the assistant's office. Yeah. The assistant is not allowed access to her office. Carol and her fucking lawyer, whoever it is, are in the office overnight. They remove the wills. She goes the next day. There is no will there. Like, this is so fucking blatant yeah. that he killed, she killed that's this man. How the fuck does she get away And with all this of a sudden, whereas the assistant had power of attorney, that was a, a new document saying Carol ha- is, has my power of attorney. So, and power of attorney, explain what that means. It means I can speak on your behalf whether you're there or not. Mm-hmm. If I give you my power of attorney, you can go into my bank account and be like, hey, I have his power of attorney. Give me all the money. And what does the new will say? No, it's Uh, not a new will. Five years after someone's death, you can declare them. Five years after someone's disappearance, you can uh, declare them dead. Yeah. Okay? So five years and one day. Yeah. She (laughs) says, I am the beneficiary, the sole beneficiary in this will. She cuts his first family out, kids out, wife out, whatever. Also, in the will, it said, upon my death or disappearance, all my assets go to. It doesn't say death. Really? It just says it disappearance. Just disappears. That's the first line. So. That's the craziest the thing. First because she could have faked line. his death or something. Yes. But instead she had to fake his disappearance. What kind of will says, if I disappear, <laughs> all my have assets Have you ever been to... worried about disappearing Never ever in your life? In my life? <laughs> Have I been worried about disappearance? Yeah, you should have seen his reaction to magic earlier. <laughs> this guy doesn't care anything about disappearing or reappearing or gets in a goddamn card. Oh, but seriously, it's, an, it. it's a specific and absurd thing to say. Yeah. Right? My yeah. disappear. Like, it's so obviously blatantly her. And I think the documentary tries to make it obvious and blatant. Yeah. And even through that, you're like, how the fuck has the FBI not investigated this at all? The creepiest part is how rehearsed her like excuses. Oh like, the yeah, what was it? What they, was they, it? Remember? So they show the clip from like the '90s, and she's like, "Yeah." He the just, last thing he said yeah. to me was, "Get the truck ready," and like the the verb yeah. the verbiage is exactly the same. Yeah, get it ready early, early, early in the morning, and then yeah. she says it like on the interview with them. Twenty she, years later. Yeah, she's yeah. like, "Yeah, he told me he was gonna get up early, early, early in the morning," and like the mm. same exact like mm. word for word creepy. Yeah. Bro, she's a murderer. So she decided what her excuse was going to be, yeah. decided the verbiage, and, and it stuck like that. to it completely. For yeah. 20 it's not a memory; years. it's a yeah. written like uh, because memories change. Yeah, yeah. no, it's a and written no, those dialogue. Are the, those are the best criminals. If your story never changes, you can't get caught. Yeah. So that's the other thing they say about like uh, uh, criminals, right? It's like, or actually, not criminals, about innocent people. Innocent people don't remember what they're doing when t- crimes were committed yeah. because it was a regular day. It's a regular day. Uh, yeah. They say innocent people are the hardest people to defend because if I say, hey, what were you doing last Friday? And you go at 1130 a.m. I, I don't uh-huh. know. If I didn't have a yeah. specific thing, I'd be like, oh, so then how the know. fuck you have an alibi? Yeah. yeah. How the fuck you have and an alibi? A lot of times it's not even last Friday. A lot of times it's like, what were you doing Thursday? Two months ago. Yeah. 
Yeah. Then you so, gotta make some shit up that might not even be so accurate. And- do you really think that if I go two months ago, what did I say to you at eleven thirty? You're gonna be like, oh, you said they'd be there early, early, early. Yeah. You're gonna remember the exact sentence. Yeah, she killed. That's why she's top dog out of all the. Okay, cops. she's, she's number one. Yeah. Number two. Joe. I am like Joe more than Jeff. No, Jeff. I, Jeff more. Jeff. Why? But Jeff, he was like. You knew who he was. He was already a criminal. Like he just looks like he wears affliction shirts. Yeah, dude. the That's fucking hat with the Oakley hat. He, looks, he hats. looks like a sketchy motherfucker. What does yeah. Joe look <laughs> normal to you? Yeah, walk. Joe Exotic looks trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was Joe... gay. Joe could get it. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't give it to you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got too many teeth, but I'm too tan. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Jeff. Just Jeff. Joe looks more friendly than Jeff. Joe looks more friendly than Jeff. I like Joe's limp better than Jeff's. Yeah. Jeff's walk. But Did I'm saying in, in terms walk? of trustworthiness, yeah. neither one of them looks like a guy you want to do business with. <laughs> Jeff was just fucking people over left and right and left and right. And I guess Joe was doing that too. Maybe Jeff just had zero charisma. So you're like, fuck this zero guy. Zero charisma. Yeah, yeah, he had zero charisma. But zero charisma. That's why it's like he Sharp wasn't goatee. that good of a Because <laughs> he, so he fucked up in Vegas early. Yeah. Like he, no, like Joe I, had this scam going on for years. So maybe you're right. Maybe I was, con- I was more like were conned. conned by Joe. So I'm like, ah, he's not as bad. Cause I put uh, him fourth. Oh wow. I put it Jeff, then Doc, then I Joe. I kind of like Doc. So, so I Doc like is Doc. Man, legend. <laughs> <laughs> so I like Doc. Okay. Uh, Doc is interesting. Doc is cold. That's the thing. Cold and polished cold and just. Cold and polished. Yo. It's almost like he was the only person that wasn't broken. Him and Jeff also. That's another thing. You could see how Joe was broken early on. In episode one, they, Joe says the story. Him coming out to his father. His dad makes him shake his hand in front of his mom to say, when I die, you will not be at my funeral. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that guy's broken from then yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most of these people were broken. Jeff yeah. was not broken. Doc was not broken. Carol's just out of her fucking mind, I think. Do you uh, think she's that- broken, dude. Oh, Carol's yeah. broken. Remember the story? Oh, yeah. Good. I mean, I want to get into that. Maybe, we, no, no, let's, let's go through the rankings <laughs> and then we'll get into that. Yeah. But um, Doc was interesting because Doc has done something, and I'm curious your take on this, but like you often see like white people grab onto Eastern philosophy. Yeah. And then, well, I mean, you see uh, you guys do it too, but like yeah. use the philosophy as like a manipulation tactic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Because apparently it's very effective to people who are empty. Like, yeah. Eastern philosophy fills fucking empty people up. Like, yeah. I remember when my brother was going through a really hard time, he got into Osho. Yeah. Do you remember that? Like, I think you and him were I didn't like know it was Osho, briefly. but I remember he was talking to me about Hinduism stuff. And yeah, it was I was Osho. like, yeah, okay, wow. Yeah, what's, he was. What's Osho? Osho is the guy who had that. Wild, uh, wild country. It's another one that I wasn't as into on as On Netflix, uh, the Rajneeshi people, they would all dress in like the reds and pinks. It was out in, uh, what was it? Oregon. It's just Oregon. vegans in the 70s. Oh, okay. But it was Wait, a whole was cult that they shut down. Was fucking people. Yeah, vegans. Yeah, uh, no, that's a different one. Oh. That was an Indian guy. I was an Indian guy. So, um, well, so was Rajneesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. So, uh, <laughs> so like, he kind of tapped into too. this shit. <laughs> Dude, Yo, crazy. you know what it is? And maybe it happens in India. I don't know if it is. But, like, maybe the type of person that comes to America is willing to do whatever the fuck it takes. Interesting. To win. Is willing to sacrifice whatever it well, is. Doc was born here, and he did the same thing. Sure, because like I think he's bred within it. Mm. But like, were we having this discussion? I can't remember. But um, there's something about the people that come here. Like all of our parents that decide to come here, yeah, like that immigrated here, um, made a choice to just leave their fucking families mm-hmm. and never see. Yeah, them we talked about it on the podcast. We yeah. talked about this on the podcast. So there's a little fucking yeah psychosis going yeah. on there, right? Yeah. Um. My theory, though, because I'm watching this and I'm watching this guy like pervert my religion and whatever. And I'm thinking about Wild Wild Country or whatever it's called. Yeah. And I'm thinking about this fucking yoga guy who's doing the hot yoga Bikram, Bikram and fucking yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, why are these people, not the manipulators, the manipulators. Actually, you're getting rejected by everybody. That was the saddest part of the Bikram documentary. Oh, he's, he's like, he can't <laughs> even None rape. of these bitches will fuck him. It's pretty easier to rape <laughs> like, in India, I guess. Usually if you're a cult leader, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you're going to get some pussy, right? Like, But girl after girl is like, nah, I was like, nah. That's insane. <laughs> now I actually want to watch this documentary. You gotta watch this This guy was getting rejected <laughs> like an Indian. <laughs> hey, we take what we want. Uh, 
But I was wondering why are these people, broken people, so drawn to this Eastern thing? And I, the, the easiest thing I thought of is it's just unique here. You have tried Western religions here and probably if you're broken you. in America and it didn't take. Uh, but here's something. That shit didn't work. Here's the opposite. Mm. This will work. This sounds great. I think potentially in India, there's people who would be taken by a Western philosopher of this and this and this, this cult, because it's like, well, I tried the Hindu thing and the Muslim and it, I'm thing, and still it, yeah, I'm upset. still empty. I'm still, I'm still, empty. still broken. Nothing has helped. Interesting. So these, this, this is so different. It has to work. Because he was really leaning on this whole shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you feel a little disgusted It was it? gross. I mean, I didn't like it. Maybe another reason I didn't like him. I tried to not make that too big of an issue, because, like, who am I to give that much of a fuck? But, like, I was like, ah, I don't like seeing this. Like, you, you literally call yourself God. That's yeah. what we call God is Bukwan. Legend. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's a legend. It's like he's just the ultimate pimp. So, ultimate <laughs> pimp. He really is. I'll give him this. He was pimping privileged girls. Yes. That's, mm. that's it difficult. is, and it is a very important distinction, right? Mm. Like, Shorty had her dad drive her yeah. to yeah. the zoo. Like, if your dad's in your life <laughs> to the point where he's dropping you off at the zoo, right? You should be okay a you little. You should be good. Yeah. Like, I understand if you're on the fucking, like, uh, on a stoop or you're on the bus store corner and they're getting picked up by yeah. Joe. That's, you have nothing left and that's what. But this guy is taking privileged white girls, pretty much, who are attractive mm -hmm. and in good shape, and then brainwashing them with this yoga shit yeah. mixed with, I guess, being around these tigers is somewhat addictive. Yeah, that's it what somebody seems, said. They oh, said, yeah, somebody yeah like that. you can tell everybody once you get one in your head, it's like, oh, my God. it's a oh, tattoo. Yeah, 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 I yeah. need more. I need more. Yeah. Um, and giving these people who are kind of bored purpose, like yeah. I often notice, like cult people, like the attractive, like white privileged girls that end up in cults are just kind of bored with mm. life. Yeah. And remember when the girl kept saying, "You just work all day." Yeah. Well, you can't be bored with life. If I mm. keep your ass busy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a hundred dollars a week. Yeah. Giving them purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's the truest purpose in a lot of ways. Like if we don't feed these tigers, they'll die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you're you know, nurturing. It taps into like your need to nurture and all that shit. You're a mother. Yeah. Can I, I ask you a question about white families? Yes. This please. father drops her off. Yeah. What was his advice? <laughs> don't fall in love with him. No, no. Don't fuck your boss. Right. Don't, or was it yeah, don't, don't fall in love with your boss? I think it was I think don't, fall it was don't fuck, fuck your boss. I think no, it was don't fall, fall in love. Probably fall in love. I think it was don't fall in love with your boss. Okay. But then she says, like, basically she makes it seem like you're trapped. And I believe that as she was talking, and just now she's like, you know, you can't really get off. You don't have time. There's nobody to talk to. Yeah, yeah. Was it so normal to your dad that you didn't call for six months? That he was just like, ah, she's probably having fun. Dude, like, if you didn't hear from your daughter that you dropped off. Bro, this is why white girls fuck the Me Too movement up. is because they don't understand what real rape is. You know what I mean? Like, it's like what? the fact is this is my premise on inside jokes but, that we edited because we were like, yo, it's but, too much. Well, now I get it after watching it. It's like this girl, like this girl thought my she exact was, words. Go find the footage we deleted. Bro, this girl was thought this was a real like I was punished. I was like manipulated. I was I had to be here. It's like I, I don't know how I could leave. What about when all those people drove up in cars? <laughs> every single day with their families did you ever think about <laughs> saying to one of them could i have a ride out of oh here and then she had this justification for it she's like um what'd she say she's like well i mean no cult forces you to stay okay bitch I, I, like I, then we shouldn't feel bad for them either she's right? talking about all her social ties i was like what social ties wait you, what she said she was like yeah they, you they don't just force got you to there stay. bitch yeah she's like they don't force you to stay they just make you sever all your social ties no there's just a million social ties yeah, yeah. that keep you there and i was and like that thought the... crossed my mind i was like bitch you just got there what is it, you and it's an italian chick and an elephant like that's, <laughs> your, that's your social circle you fucking idiot <laughs> you went bad bar bitch <laughs> yeah. just beat it what the fuck you waiting for your dad's at home waiting for yeah. you like, <laughs> you pick you up in the civic also like, if you ever had like a real social life you wouldn't be here it's like you never had social ties like that's why you ended up that's why it means yeah. so much to her this is our only social tie ah yeah. so she first got her first social tie yeah uh, it's, maybe that's what it is i mean i just did not feel bad at all for the, and you got new titties bitch <laughs> <laughs> the, the, first, the fact that like you got new titties did you get them taken out immediately afterwards no so i'm telling you this guy's a legend <laughs> this guy's a legend so. I don't, dude. He's I'm like Drake. 
<laughs> Drake Antle. Yeah, so, Drake I'm gonna get you a new body. I'm gonna hide you out over here. Nobody gonna hear from you again. <laughs> like, Yo. uh, wait, Drake, what were you so. saying? No, but I just think like privileged animal girls yeah. are a different thing. Okay. In general. Yeah. Like I don't know. Growing up, there was all these like horse girls that lived around like where I lived. Like, do yeah. you know the this prototype of like a horse girl? Does that make sense to you? No. Like no. an equestrian bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like they're just these girls that are like obsessed with horses, and like these horses become their identity. And every single one of them, without fail, is a little weird. They're a little bit off. Yeah. And I don't know exactly what Molested? the comment. I don't know what it is, dude. I assume every girl that was in that documentary has had sexual trauma. You and I so. assume every single guy that was in that documentary has either had sexual trauma or is a drug addict. Mm. I, I, I also think, and I'm going to say this and probably people listening would be pissed off. If you like animals too much, <laughs> That's awesome. you've had that. You've either uh, been. You know what my next sentence is going to be? She also be thinking a lot of girls are molested. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> you you be like, yo, this bitch got a, a, a Fucking so gazpacho I'm, soup? I'm so Who likes a cold <laughs> soup? This molested ass bitch. I'm so glad Low you key, opened bro. that. I'm so glad. <laughs> so, Low key, bro. Low key, bro. If you go to the restaurant so, and you go, can I have some gazpacho? I'm looking at you like, oh, you've been fingered <laughs> at a young bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. That's, that's an odd thing, dude. I'm gazpacho? so glad you opened that window because that's really how I look at every person who's weird. I was like, Oh, you might have diddle. <laughs> I look at everybody like Son. That. I think you might have got <laughs> Yo, well I yo, I was, bro, by the girl at the pizza <laughs> store when I was when I was managing the pizza restaurant at 13 and the girl would sit on my on my lap and get my dick all hard. Son. Charla What's that? Charlemagne talks that's about white molestation. Diddled. You think that's molestation? But here's the thing: I'm not in a whole documentary about fucking cats about it. I'm dealt with my molestation well, you didn't like get a fucking man. A ton. You got diddled, you got diddled only. I didn't even get diddled. I got backed up on. Yeah, you got over the pants backed up. Over like, the pants backed up. So you got, yeah, you got by my boy Sandro's <laughs> older sister. Shouts to her. <laughs> Gave me some of my best boners. <laughs> 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 to this day, I'm trying to get boners like that. To this day. <laughs> but it didn't make me like animals no more. That's why I wasn't a good molest. If you know you got a good molest. Yo, that's true. I think about that. You get fucked over so bad by humans <laughs> that all of a sudden the only place that gives you unconditional love and affection is animals. Bro, oh. where were we talking about it? Was it on? Uh... Yo, okay. I can accept that. No, we were talking about on this. That's the cats don't judge you. That's why strippers and shit always love. Go to any uh, OnlyFans girl. Okay. Go to any OnlyFans. Go to her page and look what her fucking issue is. It's oh, always the environment. I believe it's you always there. animals. Animal but rights. But you be taking it mad far, though. What are you talking about? If you like animals, I'm going to be honest, I think you got molested. Yes. <laughs> Can I remove <laughs> think? <laughs> <laughs> if you, now, when I say like animals. No, but you got to like them. Cra like the obsessive like. Not just like, yeah. oh, let me get a pet. If you just got a pet, I need to double check with Yo, can, I, can I be honest with you? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, what I'm saying. Oh, that's shit. what I'm saying. Oh, you got to double check with <laughs> All right. <laughs> he got a dog. Like, so. Can I ask you different animals? <laughs> this motherfucker been molested. Yeah. Let me ask you. You don't yeah, think sure. he went his whole life without fucking, without sure. getting a little dick when he was younger sure. or something like that? I'm too cute, honestly. I'm too cute to not fuck. Yeah. I don't even, I don't even blame the molester. Yeah. <laughs> he had That's, taste. <laughs> all right, can I ask you That's animals? the Indian me too. I had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to get the touch real bad. <laughs> Okay, go, Mark. Well, I want to ask you, animals. You tell me what, how much molesting you think they got to get there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go. So, like, let's say you own a horse and you ride horses all day. What happened to you? I think that, I think there's wealth in that identity. That was daddy. That's rich molesting. Yeah, you got molested by dad. Daddy. Okay. But here's the connection with the <laughs> horse. You gotta get the pony to make up for the molesting. <laughs> <laughs> you thought my dick was big. <laughs> ben, it don't seem so traumatic now. <laughs> okay, what about what about like a like a big dog? You get like a great dane. What happened to you then? I think now great dane is weird. Great okay. dane is a specific taste. I think if you get a protector dog that okay, you're really yeah. close with, like pit bull, that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's something there. But again, it's the relationship with the dog. Like, I think some girls, like, I think some white girls get a pit bull in the same way they wear, like, Air Force Ones. Like, they're trying to, like, tap into, like, this kind of like, street identity. Broad City, got, they got pit bulls. Of course. Mm -hmm. Probably. Exactly. Those I'm assuming. Exactly, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh, this is cool. This is cool that I'm wearing this sneaker that really wasn't designed for me, uh, but I'm tapping into this kind of, like, cool urban identity. Okay. I'm talking about the love of the animal. What if you got a hamster? What happened to you? 
I don't think it's possible to care about a hamster, <laughs> but if you do care about a hamster, something is really off. I actually agree with you what on that What did you have? You got like a pinky finger? Oh, like the the amount. He wants to know what the molestation <laughs> yeah. was. Yeah. He wants to take it to scale. Take it to scale. <laughs> he wants to if scale you have it a hamster. And again, it's not about the pet you have. It's the relationship with the pet. Nah, you love your hamster. Woman. Say again. If you have a hamster, it had to be a woman. What do you oh. mean? You got molested by a woman. Oh. Ooh. That's Just a, a couple theory. licks. <laughs> Let me think. Did I ever want a hamster or anything like that? <laughs> you might have, dude. Nah, but a, a girl got molested by one. You didn't get molested, yo. <laughs> you had a great time at 13. You got a hey, lap dance, Hey, bro. man, don't, don't uh, play down my trauma or whatever that is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like a victim is a victim. You know? <laughs> I'm out here, bro. Bro, you got a lap dance, dude. Believe all Schultz's. That girl's trying to act like she didn't feel my... Dick. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that little saliva come out of me, dog? Oh. You know what I mean? Oh, I could have complained about getting a lap dance, too. <laughs> bro, she's the only did. person that would go to a strip club and be like, bro, these stores molested me last night. <laughs> dog, they, yeah. was, they was molesting me. Dog. Oh, this hooker raped me, dog. I paid her $300. The bitch just raped me. Yeah, I know. She just raped me, dog. <laughs> Imagine I called that rape. <laughs> Imagine I was like, guys, rape culture. Like, y'all be like, shut the fuck up. But that's how I feel about some of these girls, man. Real talk. Dude, I, when you see. Hey, you preaching in the choir, yo. I know, bro. You don't believe in rape. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't even believe in it. Hey, it's, it's a billion of us, all right? <laughs> Proof is in the pudding, guys. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> pudding. like, is that how we y'all get say results, put it yo. in? We get results. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's like, that. it's not rape. It's just a kink. It's just what? <laughs> it's just a kink. A kink. It's a fetish. The tiger kink? Bro? <laughs> the tiger, tiger kink. Okay. No, in all seriousness, let's, let's talk about this. A weird relationship with an animal comes from something being empty. You know. Yes, there's. That- Something weird. You know you're taking advantage of the animal the same way that Joe is taking advantage of those. If your those closest relationships are to like by like multiple animals and not any humans, like something's, something's going fucked. on there. Yep. Something's right? traumatic, right? Because you're... on some level you are doing to the animal what Joe did to Travis. Yeah. Right. Like mm. Joe said, Travis, you can't leave. Yeah. The the zoo. You can't do anything. And hey, I'm going to feed you and I'm going to fill you with things that make you feel good. Like you give your dog biscuits, you give your dog food, you rub your dog down, etc. Yeah. You kiss your dog. The dog is not into humans. No. It's into dogs. Right. right. And Travis wasn't into guys. He was into girls, but he needed to do whatever he could do to make sure he was fed. Yeah. I do feel like you're kind of taking advantage of your fucking dog, man. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not wrong. It's a weird relationship. That's you're why. Not wrong. You're not wrong. I 100%. had a relationship. I had a dog. Yeah. She did uh-huh. get molested. <laughs> no, I had a dog, but I wasn't into it like that. I was like, man, come on, bro. <laughs> Joe's don't like people who are not self sufficient. He can't handle things that aren't self sufficient. Like, yo, that's a figure great, it out, yo. I love how sufficiently selfed my girl is, bro. <laughs> yeah. My and girl I remember, can do anything I remember you own. had it you had a cat for a little bit and you're like, yo, this cat is the best, takes care of himself. My like, cats are horrible, dude. They're just cold, fucking awful animals. Yeah, but then what I do and that then, cat. No, what'd you do? That was it. Was legit the worst cat I've ever met. It was, it was a bad cat. It was so clear it was Andrew's cat. It was the biggest asshole you've ever met in your life. Yeah, <laughs> that cat has been given away multiple times. <laughs> so, 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 it was given to my girl at the time. Yeah, my girl and I lived together. My girl moves to California. My ex moves yeah. to California. I kept it. Just biggest on some mistake petty you've shit. ever made. Huge mistake. Biggest mistake you ever made in your life. It was the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. It was just petty. She kept saying she was going to pick up the cat and never picked up the cat. And I was like, the cat's mine, bitch. <laughs> now I got this stupid ass cat. Right? <laughs> okay. I move out. I get my place. I give it to my brother. This shit is like sisterhood of the traveling pants. <laughs> I give Except it, it makes my... everybody's life worse. It's really yeah. tough. I give it to my brother. Right. My brother and his girl got the cat. My brother and his girl break up. She dumbly takes the fucking cat. And me and the rest of my family is like, whoo. <laughs> this is what an asshole this cat was. I remember I stayed at Andrew's place once. And at the time, he didn't have a bathroom door. It was like broken or something. Yeah. If you're pissing, the cat would run into the, jump into the shower 
and then leap at the curtain just to scare you while you're pissing. <laughs> Uh, dead ass multiple times he did it yeah. to the point where it didn't even scare me anymore Honestly. i was like i know what's coming motherfucker bro when i was watching tiger king and doc Antle was talking about cremating the fucking cats i was like mm. i wish mm -hmm. i wish mm. y'all never had this cat before. <laughs> it was a fucking terrorist this thing so why don't you just keep the shower curtain open i didn't think about keeping <laughs> like, the fucking shower curtain open who thinks about pissing and then finding a fucking solution? But if it keeps doing it, just keep the shower Because he, he's little. still going to be an asshole somehow. He's going to find a way. turn and kill that motherfucker. Yeah, You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, try that again. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to pet it. But it wouldn't even let you pet it. It was a piece of shit cat. It's Point truly is, truly the worst animal I've ever seen in my life. It was a bad. It was a bad. It was a bad cat. <laughs> okay, here's my question. Why is it wrong to euthanize a cat or a big cat, a tiger? Like, if you can kill a horse when it hurts its fucking ankle in a race... Why can't you just kill a cat? They're uh, endangered. Yeah, but you keep making more of them. One of the guys said Illegally. the best thing. Say again? Illegally there. But they're also, if you born if they're born and raised in captivity, that's not the same as, you got to like, to get the numbers up in the wild is what matters. So you got to like get the numbers or like make it to where they can go out into the wild. Do we really want them in the wild? <laughs> I was asking myself that question. Have to the people that have to live in the wild if it's not a little bit better without tigers <laughs> everywhere? I was asking myself that question. Yeah, New York has no tigers. And, and it's the best wild. It's very place. easy it's for pretty, us to want tigers good. in the world. There was this guy on Rogan, Jamie Metzl, hit a good point. Like people nowadays call, talk about all the time. It's like, ah, oh, I just love nature. And he goes, yeah, because we've killed all the animals that made <laughs> nature suck. <laughs> right? You think the aborigines running around Australia were like, I love nature. No. It's like, no, you're getting kicked in the face by kangaroos all, all day. day. Like, yeah, you don't want that. Nature's blue. Yeah. And then we murdered everything in nature and it got way better. And if we start infusing these tigers and lions and shit back into nature, it could get bad again. You know what you love about nature? It's peaceful. <laughs> Keep you know going on this. You know when nature ain't peaceful? When there's fucking lions and tigers and God knows what other animal coming at you. <laughs> Do caribous ever look at peace? <laughs> these idiots bouncing around all the fucking time. They got to evade. Yeah. Deer can't even drink water without shooting its yeah. fucking face Dude, up. They have to drink at the fucking edge of the water because either crocodiles or lions or these types of people yeah. are going to come get them. It is a horrible yeah. life. A deer, they die by getting eaten. Like, there's no deer that dies of old age. Yeah, that's true. Like, if you're a deer, you either get shot in the face by a hunter or you get eaten to, alive by, by, a bear. A, by a bear or some shit. That's your whole life. You are raised and then you tell your kids, yeah, well, we get eaten. That's what we do. Fuck. That's like a justification for hunters. They're like, well, either I'll shoot it and let it die immediately or I'll let it get eaten hunting, alive. Not e like legal hunting is actually good for population control and all that. Like it's good for the ecosystem. Yeah. Because like sometimes. But we won't do that with people. <laughs> China will. <laughs> they won't allow China hunting. China's doing it right now, son. Yeah, but they're not hunting the people. That would be fucking fun. <laughs> <laughs> son. <laughs> no, I'm just saying they're, they're very densely populated places. Just in terms India, of. China. Yeah. Just in terms of entertainment, what would be more fun to hunt? A human or an elk? Human seems easy. Yeah, it'd be Honestly, easy, dude, bro. I don't think hunting would be that big, difficult for human beings at all. I to mean, hunt a human? Yeah, we especially kill, in India. It's very easy to kill, yeah. Because yeah. we don't hear as good as And you go after the children. calves. You go after the young. <laughs> you don't get the full grown ones. You go after the ones singing You're on the street. <laughs> what? Nah, but you don't shoot a baby deer. You don't put a fucking baby deer head on your wall. It's got to be a fucking... 10 point buck like yeah. a big ass you joint gotta you gotta take down a shack yeah yo. take down wax yo <laughs> dude taking down shack Son. shack's that. head on your wall like this <laughs> you crooked ass eyes that big old hog on your wall would you tax <laughs> him like the genie that's what i would do you'd make him <laughs> make him shazam yeah exactly <laughs> okay so then thoughts about uh any final thoughts about the tiger King? who are the best people do you think um Lauren, Jeff's girlfriend. She brainwashed too. What a fucking retard that girl. Oh. She might have been the stupidest girl. She's a of fucking all idiot. I mean, ab and then legend. A, she, <laughs> I just loves everybody that got pussy. Son, yes. That's the only one. Yeah. That brainwashed woman at eleven. And he's like, yo, I love this. Son, Son. legend. No, best people in it. Um, the one-armed uh, Native American chick. Oh, she looked great. If yeah. you didn't have limbs, you were great in this. Yo, in this real time. talk. That's my. That's oh, yeah. my litmus. She was. She was the best. Human being. Yo, ever. real talk. So yeah. this girl loses her arm by getting bit by a tiger. Yeah. Gets ripped off. Goes to fucking the hospital. The whole news comes around. And then she goes, nah, fuck you guys. I'm going back yep. to work. Seven days later. I want you to know There's right now. There's an important go, go. If I lose yeah. my arm yeah. somehow on the job, a camera falls on my shit. 
I'm suing you for everything you have. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not. So I'm, I'm not. Going, son. Thank you. Bro. I'm not. I'm Thank not you, going bro. back to work seven out. days later for Joe Exotic. You almost lost your ear, and that was your fault. <laughs> I know. Okay, so your dumbass probably <laughs> fucked your arm up in the first place. Here's the thing about that girl: she didn't have to lose her arm. Yeah, they said. Oh, yeah, no, she two said, and a half years of reconstructive surgery, right? Exactly. Or we could amputate it. And she was like, "Cut it off." Cut fuck? it off because. They're going to politicize me not being at the zoo to take down the zoo and take down the animals. So I got to be in there a week later wow. to show I still support bro, she's this. A real so, bitch, who's the dumb motherfucker who had bad legs and just kept walking on them <laughs> until they had to cut them off? I didn't understand like, that at all. Yeah. What the fuck was that about? But he was fascinating, that character with the no legs, because he was highest IQ. That was also, in that, oh no. in that also, no, the campaign guy. Also, no, oh, no. Oh, campaign, campaign guy, guy was great too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No legs, great teeth. This guy had yeah. fucking perfect yeah, teeth yeah. and well, no I mean, legs. It's easier for him. He's got less stuff to look after. You know <laughs> <what> <laughs> like you're but, not clipping your you're nails. Wash his feet. But in Oklahoma, teeth. teeth don't seem to matter. So like, <laughs> I think those are fake. I think he had fake teeth. Oh, because they were flawed. Also, he's ex-military, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So I think I think there was something there. But um, maybe he got some like sort of stipend or some shit. Who knows? Or maybe he's getting uh, military benefits because he had enough money to buy a Hummer and everybody else was getting yeah. $100 a hundred dollars. Even day. at the end yeah. of the movie, he's in this badass car he's whipping the, around. Yeah, thing. like he must have been getting paid more. You know, <laughs> but he was an interesting guy, man. Like he was he was sharp and he had interesting perspective. Yeah. And like I was really curious about him. Yeah. And they didn't talk to him at all. Remember, like. He was like, "Why I ran the park for ten years? Why would the, the prosecutors feds, yeah. not oh, yeah. talk to me? Why do you think they avoided him?" Oh, he's too too reasonable. Maybe he would have said yeah. good things about Joe. And if you're prosecuti- prosecutor, you're trying to prosecute. Yeah, so you don't want to get anybody. And he was in just there. like, yeah. He basically was like, "I know he did some things wrong, but I don't think he was behind the plot to kill or whatever." Yeah, and he was gonna ride for him, bro. He had a bullet with his name on it. Like he was gonna, they were gonna ride for each other. Remember that part? That was him. Yeah. Wait, what? Where they oh, they were yeah, like, yeah. If, if any shit happens, we're gonna kill each other. Yeah, that's wild. Wait, what? That's you don't remember loyal, this? That's loyalty. No. Thanks. Maybe if you listen, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, if you listen. Yeah. <laughs> if you paid attention. Yeah. I'm sorry, babe. <laughs> if you weren't no. thinking about getting you lap dances it. from girls when you were 13 all the time. Man, she was doing it. Bro. <laughs> boy, it was hard, bro. No, he was like, uh, if you. If, if anything happens in the zoo, we're going to kill each other. And here's a bullet with my name on it and a bullet with Joe's name on it. Because the, oh. he was aware of all the fuck shit that was going but on. Like if Carol game. tries to take us down, if whatever happens, like we have a suicide pact. We we yeah. They have a suicide pact. But the, the dumbest thing about that is that both bullets were in his gun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, He's like, I shot you, Joe. Now shoot me. <laughs> I'm like, I. Right, what happens after the first shot? Son? Also, is it? Are they supposed s- to shoot me, Joe? <laughs> aren't there six bullets in the chamber? So like, how do you know which? You know what I mean? This <laughs> is just like, a symbolic I'm thing. I think you, these weren't the smartest motherfuckers, bro. So I, I think the most fascinating thing I took away from this was yeah. that Joe wasn't from Florida. Because he's real Floridian. Yeah, so. I was shocked his was thing was in Oklahoma. I was shocked he wasn't from Florida. But the thing was in Florida. Oklahoma. The farm Did was in Oklahoma. Like, blew my mind. And how far is uh, Oklahoma from Florida? It's halfway far. across the country, it's one right? one state up from yeah. Texas, and Texas is far from Yeah, that's Florida. a hike. Yeah. yeah. That's a hike. Like, the moment he started talking, I sensed he was gay, and I was like, oh, he's gay, and he's from Florida. And I was shocked that I was wrong on that one. Yeah. Not on the gay one. <laughs> yeah, now I'm thinking about this fucking... That guy in the pact. Maybe that's how Joe manipulates. I don't think that they gave Joe enough credit with his manipulation skill. Mm. Because, oh, or they just wanted to make him seem uh, reasonably likable. But I think he was like a master manipulator, next level manipulator. And I think that bullet shit was just part of it. Yo, we're in this together, right? Mm. Hey, we love each other, right? We'll do anything for each other. I would kill myself for you. You can't fuck me over. I would kill myself for you. And that's why he got so tricked when Jeff was like, here's 35 grand. Fuck you, bitch. Remember it? Because like, somebody was playing him. Doing yeah. the same thing he did to other people. But you like, would yeah. think he'd be aware of it, right? And you think you think that somebody like no. Joe would be would understand who Jeff was. Because Jeff can't... Jeff has to be known by these other characters. But he was too desperate at that point. And nothing about... You know what, I, you know what I think it is, bro? Point. I think that Jeff and then the other dude were working for the feds for a minute. I think that they are like... Mm. You know how like Whitey Bulger was able to do his criminal shit <laughs> even though he was an informant? Yeah. I think that's kind of how this operated. I think Jeff was in with the feds and I think the other dude were in with the feds and the feds are basically like, yo, go do your shit. But if we need to lean on you for something, 
we're gonna lean on you for something because I think Jeff, I think he wanted to kill Carol the whole time. What's her, what's his face, Joe? Mm-hmm. But I don't think he was actually gonna go through with it. And I think Jeff was like, "Nah, we could get this done." Because he hated Carol before. But the reason why I don't think that, because he was surprised when he went to the bank and the teller told him, like, oh, yeah, there was some feds that were asking questions. Mm -hmm. And then he goes back to Joe. He's like, yo, what the fuck? Like, he looked through the books. And now he was worried that he was going to get caught up by the feds. And he's like, I already got a felony. I can't get another felony. Or the feds go to him and they say, hey, do you think if he runs for governor, he'll use some money from the park? Well, that's the only money he's got. All right, let him do it. Mm. Uh, he, well, then he's a good actor. Though, it's he possible. was like very surprised. Because Jeff got to keep the scent off of the trail, right? He just looks so dumb. I can't understand yeah, why you would no, think he's rich. I think he's a survivor. And if you're a con man, you could con. And the guy's a con man. That's what he does for a living. He tricks motherfuckers. You but know? you don't have to be that smart to be a con man, though. That's just like you just have to find the one You got to find the mark. Just the one thing and every person who's like, Someone's oh, got to be more desperate you than you are intelligent. Yeah, that's it. And it's also a specific type of person. Like, uh, we talked about pickup artists, and you read that book. They weren't going after every girl. They went after, they would work with a specific type of girl that's kind of broken. And it's just this whole thing is just broken people I didn't know that. exploiting broken people. No, yeah, I know that wasn't the idea with the book at all. I'm pretty sure that was like. You, Did you read it? Yeah, it was just like they're, you're basically so going why'd after. Why you say girls. that book you read to me? <laughs> the book you told me about is what I meant to say. My bad. Oh no, no, the book you practiced. <laughs> so the idea with the book was was not. It, the idea of the book was to make every girl feel broken, not go after broken girls. But it worked. Like, if a girl felt super validated, if you're like, oh, those shoes look comfortable. Oh, wow, gosh. And you then... think that they feel validated. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure you mentioned that in the book. That was something I remember picking up is being like, but that, anyway, the point is, this yeah. is broken people exploiting broken people. Yeah. Joe's broken. His dad broke him. That's why he felt drawn to animals in Florida. Because it's like, oh, yeah. here's love I've never gotten. This is great, whatever. Oh, Joe it's, spent time in Florida. Yeah. Yeah, and then he fled back. So to, you were right. Uh, he fled back to Pensacola God at the end. Damn, I'm yeah. good. I'm good. Yeah, you know who's the most fascinating character that they barely touch upon? Hmm. The Cuban guy. Yeah, he, who, I want to see one on him. him Wait, which, only which him. Guy? Who's the guy who's the closest friends with Doc Antle, who was like a drug dealer. He was a Cuban Scarface. drug dealer who yeah. they basically oh, yeah, made Scarface after. That guy yeah. was dope. Who stopped dealing drugs. He did his time. He yeah. beats the, I guess he, I guess he wins the appeal, does yeah. 12 years, comes out, clearly has all his drug money. Yeah. yeah. And now he's just an exotic animal collector with a private zoo that he doesn't allow people to go to. In Miami, just hanging out. Burning $10,000 per cat. Yeah. A month. I mean, with no money coming in. With no money coming, that's how much money he made off of the drug shit. And what a way better story. Um, what's the movie Scarface would have been <laughs> if you just kept it going? Like yeah. fuck, say hello to my little friend. Yeah. Show him your little friends. Like yeah. look at all these little friends <laughs> these that you snakes have. Snakes full of cocaine, yeah. just fucking swimming around. Oh yeah, that was dope. <laughs> that they, had, they stuffed the cocaine in the snakes. In the snakes, cut the snakes right the fuck that's open. Genius. Dope. You're wild. It's wild. You think he's still doing it, and that's how he's. Yeah. That's probably why we didn't hear more of his story. Yeah. But why, if you're still doing it, you're not going to let them in. No, yeah, because Doc. Drug dealers are brazen. They, they love yeah, showing They need that shine. They need Doc, to be known. Doc calls him up and says, hey, Mario, like these guys are making a documentary. They're really cool. It's for Netflix. Come let them hang out. Uh-huh. So you make the place look nice and Disney World it, and they come in and check it out. And that's yeah. it. Did you notice how much the director hated Doc Antle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they left it on the little parts. <laughs> Explain that. So it's like, so Doc's outside. He's like, all right, so I'll just like open up the door and you guys can just come in and uh, like say what's up. And then they're walking out. They're like, I like that Doc is directing us. Yeah. Like they got on some petty shit on Doc. Oh, re- and they the did like three more it. times. It, it, basically, before they play, press play on the camera, every single scene they left in what Doc would say before. And before you start recording, you're an asshole. Yeah. Everybody's an asshole. Before yeah. we start, I could be like, yo, are we ready to go? Yeah. What if you kept in, are you ready to go? <laughs> I'm going to do that one. Before <laughs> every single episode. But it was every single scene, and the director fucking hated him, and you know he's sitting in the edit like, how can I make this scumbag? <laughs> can we talk about the director for a second, though? Yeah. Like, I think he started to get wrapped up in that world. Like, Which I think one? he started yeah. to like So that there's world. two. You're talking about Kirkman or the actual director oh, of the documentary? Oh, there's two, so maybe that's why and I missed it. The old man that looked like a detective? Yeah, the one that we kept talking talk to like that we would see in the old like, videos. Wait, which one is that? This, this is Rick Kirkman where he's like, yeah, you know, the, the reality show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's talking about <laughs> the reality show. Yeah, that guy, that guy. Yeah, he also like, 
He yeah, got, he, got he got in it. So he where does he get his money from? That's he's what I was a concerned. he's a broken con artist too. What yep. the? F- oh, we it's were in talks cons. with networks to sell this. Yeah, you ain't talking to fucking nobody. And then all of a sudden, Joe is like this sad guy. He's like, you can't take my life. He's like, well, actually, I own all the footage, yeah. <laughs> and I own your web show, and I own everything you've ever done. So it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. What's wrong with this guy? Everybody who's conning everybody. It is then, white it, trash it, Game of Thrones, all son. The That's footage all got it is. Destroyed. How did they make this doc? Because he kept some of it because he burned the shit down. I don't Whoa. Know. You think it wasn't Joe? You think it was Kirkman? I think it was kind Joe. Of. You think it was Joe? They make yeah. it seem like it was Joe. He's like, ah, oh, let me go away when this happens. Who benefits so the most from it burning down? Joe. Probably Joe. Right? Joe. Probably Joe. Yeah. Unless Kirkman is like super in debt and he needs to recoup the money for the equipment or something like that. Aren't you a yeah. retard to not back it up though? For months, he got months of footage. There's no way he didn't back it up. Nah, and that's like, why he has some the of the amount footage. that they were shooting. Like, son, literally, while we're shooting this right now, I texted uh, I texted Alex to put put on the camera so we have a backup for this. Yeah, but this is you're talking about 20 years ago. This is like no, I it's thought, not necessarily film, but it's like this is like five years ago. This is yeah. I thought nah, when they it. first started, they started like seven first years recording ago. in the seven, right? Like early two thousand. I, I think they say seven years ago. You sure? They when have they, footage. When they first started recording. I think, I think so. They dig up footage from like two thousand four. She married her second husband in two thousand four. The cuck. Yeah. Carol's cuck husband. <sighs> dude, what a simp, dude. Dude, I fucking. I yo, thought I thought he was riding with simp. him during that time. Oh yeah. He's a simp, but low key, he's not. Bro, he's a simp. Nah, bro. that. Nah, he's riding this way. So you see the his pants yeah. height, and you're like, oh, this guy's a nerd. And you see the way he dresses on that you kind of You saw him on their wedding where he's wearing a fucking... You see the picture where he's on his knees and she got him on a fucking <laughs> leash? He's dressed like Collar Barney Rubble. Yes, with because the fucking she got the money from the ex-husband. Exactly. He's just marrying rich right now. He's, he's like, I'm going to do yo, what you want. Son is exploiting her. Yeah. That's a thing. Yo, that's a great... This is a great documentary yeah, about exploitation. <laughs> this guy was some fucking nerd, right? Who came up on some girl who was needy, needed love, and needed a simp, someone she could feel safe with. You think she gonna feel safe with an alpha? She killed the last alpha, right? She'll get mm-hmm. left. She needs someone that relies on her, someone that needs her for every single thing. She needs a cat. He used being a simp to his advantage, but he's a simp though. Yeah, he's a, he's Are a smart you a simp, simp if you're using it to your advantage? You're a smart simp, bro. You're smart you're simp. Smart simp. Yeah. He's a smart simp. It's like Michael Sarah. <laughs> he's like that a simp, but he's like, oh, it's popping now to be a simp. All right, I'm gonna run with this simp shit. Yeah. But he's like through and through a simp. I don't know, man. Like a simp simp would have gotten scared when there was some death threats and like peaced out. That motherfucker rode through the death threats, collected the money like Jon Snow. He was son, a bit of a simp. What kind of life was, is this? Yo, 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 don't you ever talk son, about Jon Snow, Snow like that again. Simp, son. Nah, nah, nah. I can't, son, I can't put up with that. He man. was I just letting Daenerys just like. Tell him everything, like what to do. But then he had a yeah, brain of never his had own. Dragon pussy. He killed the so, bitch. What you talking <laughs> about? That's what I'm saying. So he was a smart simp at the end. Son. Watch this simp motherfucker. Watch Carol go show, um, show up missing soon. Watch. What, what kind of life and is I that? Bet you the, the bitch got be in cats thing. all over the house. The whole fucking thing is cat furniture. That's the life he wants. Son, all he's seeing is twenty three thousand coming in from Facebook. Every What's week. he doing with the money? Buying cargo shorts? Son, watch when the <laughs> Son, watch when the, the meanest bitch comes Dockers up. collection. Bro, he ever, looks like he bro. works at mini golf, dude. dude. Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing with these millions of dollars? Yeah. Right, it's her money. Watch, watch and watch. see, bro. It's gonna be a part two. This motherfucker's got to come. Uh, I, guess we'll, I guess we'll watch. His Barry Topsider collection is stupid, dude. He's <laughs> killing it, bro. The <laughs> talk shoes. My man was legit and never phased the entire time. Cool, calm, collected, yeah. bro. He's trying to work out the deal. He's like, "Yo, deal with me. Don't worry about her. We can work." Yo, you don't realize he's the biggest pimp of all. <laughs> <laughs> this dude got he's no. He got nothing to do with the beef. Like he is nothing. Z, he don't give a oh, fuck about cats. Himself. He just wanted to smoke. He, he, just wanted, is, to smoke, he wanted to smoke. That's the most alpha thing. <laughs> And then he sings to her at the end after he wins the day. Sang to her <laughs> like a simp. Like a simps don't sing. <laughs> yeah, they do, boy. Serenade this bitch for he nothing. Serenaded this bitch. Yo, I want to know what's gonna happen with these millions of dollars because right now he ain't spending none of it. Who? The simp. What you know? You don't know <laughs> that. I look at the that. motherfucker. I did look at. Got look like Rick Moranis, and you can tell me he's <laughs> fucking out here. <laughs> Making money. Guy look like Egon from Ghostbusters. And you can tell me he out here spending all this money. Bro. M- millions of dollars. He's a legend. Fucking dog. lens crafters glasses. He's a legend. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, this has been another episode of Flagrant 2, man. We hope we, uh, hopefully we gave you guys some, uh, some distraction, <laughs> some drama, some intrigue. 
uh, gave you a nice little look into the Tiger King and the world in which he lives. Um, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We'll see you guys on the Patreon this Friday. Shouts to all the new patrons that just signed up. Yo, shouts to you guys uh, for the roast. Great idea, Al. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you guys like the roast, man. We're going to keep it up. We're going to keep shit interesting over there on the Patreon. Um, so we'll cook up something fun for you guys this Friday. And uh, stay tuned to Twitch. We might have that coming soon. Oh, yo, we're probably gonna get a little Twitch going. We're yeah, gonna make yeah. sure you guys are thoroughly distracted during this quarantine, man. That's on us to do that. So, peace, love, and uh, Bye.